but also you can't get out of I bed. think that it was something that he wanted to do that was for the good of what are you doing with your hand there? Chinoda. Yeah, Chinoda, what are you doing? <laughs> My knee is hand check. Super, <laughs> hand knee is check, super bro, itchy. Hand check. Bro, it just looked like you're doing this. Like, like what? <laughs> what's going on there, buddy? Yeah. Buddy, that's over here. Not over here. I mentioned okay. here. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. My name is Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. Sorry, I'm trying to read something and I can't read it. Oh, <laughs> is it your last will and testament? No, the text is just so tiny. <laughs> Why do people do this? What are you reading? <laughs> I don't, it's, it's, I'm trying to read looking at a picture and it has like text but i want to read the text but it's super tiny and when you zoom in it's all pixelated I oh hate i hate that. that i hate like that. i hate you know that so with much. the invention of ai i feel like they should you know you know the zoom and enhance meme right yeah yeah we should that actually should just, have that by now i we should just have that by now with ai come on guys <laughs> like stop using it to replace people's jobs and industries that we care about and just make cool technology where i can zoom and enhance we can actually zoom and enhance <laughs> yeah um, and we have our Himmel Sub Chinoda. The spice, the sky splitter is a great enjoyment. The what? The what? No one gets Fern. your, your, f f what? oh, sky splitter. Burn the I get sky it. splitter. I get it. I get it. I, I get don't it. get it. It's a I terrible joke, it. but I get it. Do you remember when Freyrin was, uh, laying in, uh, Fern's slap? And she could only see half the sky. Oh, she Fern, was the Fern sky was, splitter. She, yeah, yes. <laughs> Freeran was jealous of her boobs. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, we are here tonight to talk about Freeran. So, uh, probably one of the, uh, well, it was the anime we said was the best anime of 2023 uh, in our uh, 2023 quote unquote award show that we did uh, about a month or so ago. It was an award show. It was it a was recommendation a, show. It, it was a wrap. It was a wrap up. season wrap. It, it, was, it was a, a year wrap, wrap up. up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it, it was one. It was the anime that I think all of us kind of agreed was the must watch anime of 2023. Um, and to that end, we are doing a spoiler cast on it as we promised. Um, so yeah, here it is. We're gonna spend the next hour and a half or longer, maybe, talking about uh, free rent and why. Shut up, Shinoda. You know it's gonna be that long because all the tangents we're gonna go on. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's pretty like cut and cut and dry, clear and cut. All the other idioms. Like the show's really. <laughs> Do you want to go through any more? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that many American idioms. I, I try to learn as much as I can because mm. some of them make sense, some of them don't. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, let's let's get into it. So uh, let's do a little bit of technical info uh, first. So obviously, this is produced by Studio Madhouse, which Bless. I think going into this was something we were all a little iffy about because of Madhouse's reputation lately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, oh, free run. That's super hype. I think it was in the tie that was like, oh yeah, free run is gonna be super hype. Funny enough, uh, he is the one who was like hyping this show up because he's like, bro, bro, yo, Sobe's doing the opening song, bro. Free Evan really Call, good. bro, bro, Evan Call, bro. And then he's the he's only like... one who hasn't finished watching it. I, I, yeah, yeah of all of I don't think he's barely started. Past... Yeah, I think he hasn't gotten past episode four or five. Five. Right? Yeah. He's on episode five. Like, he's what permanently heck, on episode man? five. Do you know? Funny thing about Natai, he does this with a lot of anime that are longer than like a single season, like twelve or thirteen episodes. No, he He'll does get to, like the. Though... Uh, the, no, he gets to the wait, fifth wait, episode, no, 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 and then no, no. he just what never he finishes does, it. He doesn't like finishing good shows, because he'll start <laughs> it, and it's like, dude, this show is really good. And then he won't finish it. And it's like, why? <laughs> well, you know it's good. And it's like, because if I finish it, it'll be over. And I'm like, but you got to experience all of it, bro. No, like, I, I get that. No, I mean, freaking watch all of it. Stop. <laughs> stop being weird. Stop hating yourself. <laughs> part, part of the journey is experiencing the ending, too, you know? <laughs> I just... <laughs> It's weird. It's a weird thing. But yeah, I, you know, I remember Freerun was, was it number two on the uh, seasonal release chart on, for like on most the fall anticipated? chart? It was like the second or third most anticipated thing. Yeah. 
yeah, so it was it was really hyped going into it. And then like um it premieres with its two hour special, aka the first four episodes drop. Like yeah. instantly. And I remember people just going off about free rent. Just like, oh my god, have you watched Chinoda was like, Oh my god, have you watched Free Run yet? <laughs> I was gushing over it. And then and I was like, like, Oh my god, have you watched Free Run yet? <laughs> And then Natalia's like, oh, my God, have you watched Free Run yet? I'm like, no, I haven't fucking watched Free Run yet. Like, it can't be that great, guys. You guys are freaking full of crap. And then I watched it, and I was like, oh, my God, it's pretty good. <laughs> and then, then he's thinking to himself, God damn shit. it. I have to go back hat in hand and say, God, you were right. Fuck. Like, fuck. You're right. You, I was like, you know what? You guys were right. It was good. It was pretty good. Pretty damn good. But You guys you have know, no clue how much John bled when he said that. <laughs> His eyes were bleeding as he was saying that to us. I, for one thing, I don't like shows that everyone unanimously agree agree is good because it's like it's overhyped, right? I I think people overhype a lot of things, you know, like Game of Thrones or like Star Wars. It's all overhyped. Or Jujutsu uh, Kaisen. <coughs> Whoa. Whoa! How dare you? Yeah, a little bit. Well, we're canceled uh, now. We're fucking canceled now, bro. The people who think JJK is like the best anime in the world, they're just they basic man come no, on no 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 they're, they're it's their intro anime they're like give them give them a break do you know what it's it's funny you mentioned that john because i was just doing a cursory look at mal before we uh before we did this and as of now as of the time of recording this this is now the most like highly rated thing on mal it is and by a wide margin too it's not even close um but if you go, if you scroll down and see the reviews of the show on Mal, it it has a thing now where it shows you like one recommended, one mixed feelings, and one not recommended. Uh, the not recommended one just starts off immediately mentioning Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, like, oh, that's great. I see. The thing is, so with Free Ren, um, people can't go into it thinking that it's going to be like your stereotypical anime because. Hmm. It doesn't have like it's first of all it's not a shonen so there's not a lot of fight scenes like there's very despite being run in shonen jump or a shonen jump manga magazine yeah well just because you're part of a jump magazine doesn't mean you have to be shonen like it, they have you don't have to be but you typically expect it you know yeah but with free run it's like there are fight scenes there are action sequences and boy are they freaking amazing but it's also not like constantly like battle tournament battle tournament battle tournament and even in yeah. the battle tournaments i guess you could call it or the battle arcs they don't like they're not like three episodes of like ah i'm powering up give me your spirit bomb ah! <laughs> like it's and it's not, not like, like you know that there are there are a copious amounts of flashbacks like in shonen though yeah there are copious amounts of flashbacks but it's good flashbacks like i like how they do the storytelling and it's character building flashbacks boy do i do i like the music oh my god (laughs) can can we talk about that can we talk about the music in this my god evan call is on his s tier game bro like man go violet evergarden was was really good really good ost right Mm -hmm. And when I saw Evan Call was doing the music, uh, you know, we we all made the same joke, like, oh, it's it's Evan Call. It's the other English name that we can see in credits. It's not Kevin Pinkett. It's the other Kevin yeah. Kevin Pinkett. <laughs> it's the other uh, Westerner making music. It's the for other guy, Jim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, I like the music in Ever- Violet Evergarden, you know. And then I heard um, the opening song "Hero" by Yo Sobi, because Natai wouldn't shut up about it. And I was just like, yeah, it's all right, you know. And then I saw that the ED was going to be done by uh, Malay, and I was just like, okay, I like I like Malay. She she's pretty good singer. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the opening song, and I'm just like, yeah, it's all right, you know. It's not a bad YoSoB song. It's I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite YoSoB song for sure. There's way better ones out there. <laughs> Idol. <laughs> yeah, it's the best one actually. <laughs> Uncontested. Idol is the best YoSoB song. Also came out last year. <laughs> but uh. Other than that, though, like, the music inside of the actual show, like, the, the OST and stuff, is fucking phenomenal. It, I likened Free Ren to watching, like, a movie. Every single mm. arc or every single episode that resolves is like a movie, like a certain part of a movie. And the OST definitely reflects that. Every time I watch it, I'm just like, all these, like, how everything's being played out, it's like I'm watching a fucking big screen movie. <laughs> Which is yeah. pretty fucking awesome. It's a I cinematic got that feeling experience. Too. 
No, it was exactly like that. Yeah. I believe Evan Call said in an interview that that's what inspired them for the soundtrack. I might be thinking about something else. I don't know. I remember <laughs> I remember reading it. I'm not sure if it was about Evan Call and specifically about Free Rain, but I think it was that. I I'd have to look it up, but Again, I can believe been, it though. <laughs> you know what? It might have just been someone posted some bullshit on Twitter, and I believed it. it, it I did not do any research. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. I mean, based on my how I feel listening to the music, though, I could I could believe that if that's if that is true. Um, I'm I completely agree with you. It, it the music has a very cinematic feel to it, especially those episodes where they wrap up the story arcs. Um, that they're doing like the music in those just goes above and beyond it's it almost to the point where yeah it's almost to the point where the music itself is telling the story like you could take out the 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 visuals and the dialogue and like that music is telling the story on its own and that's well impressive. there's a lot of sequences where it's like i guess you can call them montage sequences where mm -hmm. there's no no one's talking it's just the music playing yeah and the characters are just moving and doing stuff you know not necessarily training, but just traveling and moving and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's meant to, like, invoke certain feelings out of you. Like, frick, man, the frickin' – the beginning with, like, Hemo, right? Uh, mm. Like, the sad frickin' melancholic music that the sting that always plays when something, like, melancholic happens. I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. that hurts. <laughs> oh, why you do this, Evan? <laughs> Yeah, I, there's that there's that little theme. Um, the first time you hear it is during like Himmel's uh, funeral in the second. Is it the second episode? I think it's the second. Yes, episode. second. second yeah, episode. it's a second. Um, and they Evan uses like a little tiny piece of that funeral music any time that Himmel is on screen in the uh, in the flashbacks that you see, and it's mm -hmm. like it's a great musical callback to the character itself. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Um, what was I gonna? So you mentioned the the uh, the, uh, the first OP uh, by Yosobi, which is Hero, that was used in episodes one through sixteen. Um, yeah. The second OP was Sunny by uh, Yodoshika, and that was done from episode seventeen through the end to twenty eight. Now, how do you feel about the two OPs? Like, which do you prefer? Oh, I prefer that's tough. Hero. Honestly, I prefer Hero. I like the visuals of Hero a mm -hmm. lot more. Um, however, Sunny by Yoshika is not bad. Like I like Yoshika, so I do know that people were complaining about Hero, the uh, the first opening song, because they're like, "Oh, anytime, anywhere" by Malay is a lot sadder, and also um, Bliss, because that was the first four EDs, right? Yeah. So for the two hour like special that they did on Japanese television, uh, Malay did a, a different ED song. It was called Bliss. Yeah, so like Malay doing the EDs, everyone was like, "Oh, that fits the theme of this of Free Run a lot more than Hero," because you know, Yo Yo Sobi's Hero is a little bit poppy. But then you listen to the lyrics, you're like, "Oh, this is this kind of depressing." <laughs> yeah, it's, ta depressing. it's talking about, yeah, it's just like just because the um, it starts ramping up, it's like dun 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 dun, but it's like the the lyrics are super depressing. <laughs> It's and, it's know, a people, it's one of those songs where weird. the the music and the the tone is upbeat, but the lyrics are not. <laughs> yeah, in classical Yosobi fashion, mind yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, like this is not new for for Yosobi. Like this is their mo. Uh, but I I do kind of agree musically. Um, uh, anytime anywhere kind of fits the overall spirit of Freerun. Uh, but I do like the lyrics of Hero. I think the lyrics of Hero fit the story being told, even if the music doesn't. And I love the I, visuals. For me personally, uh, for OP, I prefer Sunny, actually. I, I just like how it sounds. Uh, I like how pl how pleasant it is in comparison uh, to Hero. It, it sounds more gentle, more uplifting. Um, the ET, The ED... It's my god, it's downright depressing for me and I love it. I'm just like it gets me in a mood. I like I it it gives Sad me a feel hours. of yeah, it really does. And I'm just like okay, I know how this is pr uh probably going to go and it just makes me sad, but I'm here for the journey and it makes me happy for it. And it, and the visuals that go along with it. My god, it is so expressive, so beautiful. It's truly artistic and i love other that. than 
the claymation that they go into later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> other than the claymation, that one was a little bit weird. I, other than you know, the claymation, I, yeah. I was like, all right, the the first OP, the second OP have amazing animations. Looks really cool. There's action sequences in them, right? Really, really well animated. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first ED, like style, I guess, is really good. I I think it's it's weird, but I like it. I like how highly stylized it is. And then they transition to that like weird claymation thing and i'm like i don't know how i feel about this it's kind of weird <laughs> it doesn't like it doesn't look that great and i don't know why they chose this artistically you know i i you know i don't you know I, i'm not an artist all right i don't understand art i can't i can't be profound and understand a lot of things you know i, I think jackson pollock was a terrible artist so you know whatever um you're not alone in thinking that <laughs> So obviously, I, I'm not the person to ask about like whether or not it has any true artistic value. Like, it, no, not to me. <laughs> but um, it definitely fit though. Like, I didn't think it was a, a bad animation. Like, it it was just weird that it was claymation. Also yeah. weird that it wasn't the only anime that did claymation <laughs> for its ED. There were two other anime during the time that ED just was showing. Just a really weird coincidence. It was like. Weird quit. What studio is selling this like claymation? Like, what is this? No, <laughs> they're like, guys, the same... Chicken Run is back in town. We got a match. <laughs> Bro, it makes you wonder I... if the same animator was in charge of directing all those different EDs. Maybe I, I, you know, I don't I, think I'm so. Not... I don't think so. <laughs> like the stop motion style, the claymation stop motion style. I'm like, I'm not against it. You know, like I, hmm. I like Chicken. Um, Chicken was Run chicken was a run? good movie. Chicken Run, you said? Yeah, that's Chicken yeah. Run. That's the one where the dude's trying to fly out of the coop. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, but with chickens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also like, was it Wallace and Gromit? Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's done by the same studio that did Chicken Run. Oh. And obviously, um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, you know. I like stop motion. No, I grew up with Gumby. <laughs> If anyone out oh, there knows what I Gumby I is. used I used to fuck with Gumby, my man. I used to have yeah. figures of Gumby. I the still see Gumby. That? See, you've never oh, seen Chinota's, Gumby. No, Chinota's look at this a little babby. babby. Look at this babby. little babby. All right, let's. I guess. Let's oh, do he's got to look at the up. green like claymation guy. Anyway. I can't believe you've <laughs> never even heard of Gumby. Oh, this thing. <laughs> It might have been at the tail end of like his um childhood, his childhood. Yeah. I never watched this. Man. I, I've seen images of it, but I'm like, yeah. I watched yeah. Gumby a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, it, you know, outside of the, the weirdness factor of it, I it's still well done. I liked it. Yeah. Um, it is worth pointing out, so for the ED, it was the same song that was used, but they used different visuals for the first half over the second half, and yep. in the second half, they used a different stanza from the same song. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> instead of being, um, yeah, the, the standard one minute 30, it was, I think it was a longer, like a different, like a yeah, minute a different... 45-ish. I swear it was longer. But, it may have been. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, really it was a different time. Yeah, it was a different part of the same song, hmm. which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, moving on, we can actually get into the the meat uh, of this spoiler cast and talk about the actual story of uh, of Freerun Beyond Journey's End, which is a very apt title, even though it's not the actual direct translation of a Japanese title. Um, I believe the the direct translation is free run at the funeral. Is I, it? I'm going to look it up. I think that is. It, it's, well, while I know... he looks it up, uh, it properly does start off, off at the journey's end because that's yeah. what the story is. Which John John pointed out, like, this is not like your typical anime. It's not even like your typical fantasy story either. Like, this story starts out with our main characters, or who you're first introduced to as the main characters, defeating the Demon King, which in most other fantasy anime, that would be the end of your story. <laughs> right. That would be like, the ultimate goal of... An anime of... that starts at the end. Yeah. Um... And so, like, yeah, we're we're watching the beginning of this story take place at the end of these characters' like quest, a ten year long quest to defeat uh, the Demon King. They come back to the capital. They're celebrated as heroes, and everyone's having a great time. They think they're going to be, um, I guess, uh, 
celebrating a, a new era of, of peace and prosperity now that the Demon King uh, is gone. And so, which they just are. so, which it, it turns out that they are. Uh, it turns out to be a very, very peaceful time after all this happens. Um, got, just so happens that when they are having the celebration, there's a meteor shower going on that takes place once every 50 years. And um, all the members of this uh, party, which is uh, Himmel, the hero, uh, Eisen the dwarf, Hater the corrupt priest. I call him Hater. I know it's Hyter, but I just look at the name and I just I can't think but say Hater. <laughs> um, the corrupt priest, and you have Freerun, obviously, um, the elven mage. Uh, Himmel and Hyder are humans, and they only live for about 70, 80, 90 years max. What'd you say, Question John? Mark. <laughs> what? I, I mouthed fucking hate it. You hate fucking it. Fucking hate it. What? <laughs> I'm a hater of his hater. Instead of uh... Uh, where was I going with this? God damn it, John. Um now that I've interrupted this, yes, the, the Japanese title is Soso no Free Then, which is could be roughly translated to the final farewell to the dead. Or okay. uh, in the, on the actual Japanese manga, it says "Remnants of the Departed." So, so okay, fair enough. Um, but anyway, as it turns out, uh, there's a, a meteor shower going on, and they're all going to go their separate ways. But um, it's suggested that they meet back here in 50 years' time to watch it again. And Freerun said that she's going to show all of them a better place to watch the meteor shower. So, 50 years go by. By the way, get used to that. There are massive time jumps in this anime. Absolutely massive. <laughs> um, especially here in the beginning. Because um, Freerun, as an elf, lives for thousands of years. Whereas humans only live for about 100 or so if they're lucky. And dwarves only about 300 or so. Um, but Freerun's been alive for over 1,000 years. We've learned that later. Oh, 3,000. Yeah, what's well, over a thousand? Um, oh yeah, the three thousand anyway, years was it really? Yeah, because if you did the math of um, when she was born and when she was taken a as a apprentice, as an, how an much apprentice, yeah. how much time from fla uh, flame? Flame? Flame, flame, yeah, flame, flame. yeah. But, flame. Uh, from her to Himmel, that's uh, another thousand. It's like she's over three thousand years old. No, oh. she really is Obachan. Yeah. Um, also, if you if you hear all these German names, Sprachensi Deutsch, get used to it because uh, there's a lot of German in this, both character names and place names. Um, anyway, the four four uh, heroes end up meeting fifty years later. Obviously, the two human characters, uh, Himmel and Heider, are elderly. Uh, Himmel's basically on his deathbed, pretty much. Um, he turns into a freaking bald old man. He does. Short, too. He's so tiny. You can carry him in a pocket. <laughs> He's so um, cute. But they watch the uh, the meteor shower again 50 years later, and then very, very shortly after that, I think like, like two days after it, Himmel dies. <laughs> um, and then Which, at the funeral... I'm not going to lie. I was like, I saw this... I. I saw this coming a mile away. I still cried. I yeah, like, me oh. too. Me too. I don't love those the, tears. The freaking the musical stings and like just the story about like how he's he's at the end of his life, but he got to do the one thing he said he was going to do before he died, which was meet together again with his friends after all this. And it's like, it's not like he lived a bad life. They re really respected him, but he lives also a modest life, like just kind of in that room. But it was just so sad, bro. I was like, and he kind of lives a very lonely life too. Well, yeah, because it's like everyone treats him as like the great hero who saved everyone, but at the end of the day, you know, life moves on. Like that's what I really yeah, like. Life about really moves on because it's about the what happens after you beat the Demon King, and we get to actually explore the world with Free Ren and stuff, and that's yeah. what makes it so freaking awesome. Yeah, um, that's another thing. Like I really loved about Free Ren is um, the drip feeding of both like the character development and the like world lore. Because it doesn't front load anything. Like you learn kind of as this journey that she goes on goes along. You don't get info dumped. You get little pieces here and there, and it builds up to a bigger picture. So you have yeah. to pay attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
unfortunately, Furin isn't an anime that you can just throw on in the background. <laughs> no. Which, because, like, you know, I, I tend Nor to watch things you. in the background. Well, yeah. I tend to watch things in the background, but every time I throw on Furin to try to do something, I would be so freaking lost after, like, five or ten minutes of not paying attention. But like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I got to stop what I'm doing, playing video games or doing whatever, and freaking rewind and actually watch. <laughs> Your Nihongo was not good enough? Uh, it wasn't that I didn't. I, I, it's not that my Nihongo wasn't Jozu enough. It was just that <laughs> there was just too much shit going on. <laughs> it's true. It's like, what, I mean, what's happening? Because again, a lot of things they don't speak a lot of the times when they do things. <laughs> they kind of yeah. just have the musical stings, and you're like, you got to watch and actually show physically. don't tell. You well, yeah, it's a lot of show don't tell, and it's like it's not. It's it's great that they do that because you know it's a very uh, impactful, but it kind of sucks at the same time because it can't personally just, like... affects John. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's like, well, I can't freaking I'm, if I'm not staring at it and seeing what's happening on the screen. Like, I can I understand that this musical thing means something uh, melancholic <laughs> is happening, but what is happening? I don't know. <laughs> John's John's got the anime on and he's trying to do other stuff while he's doing it, and then he just can't keep up, and he's just like, and I took that personal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, so Himmel dies, and at the funeral, uh, Freerin herself expresses a ton of regret over having known Himmel as long as she did and going on that journey with him. And she knew very little about him. She never really got spent any time getting to know him during his life. Um, despite spending what, to us as humans, you know, 10 years is not like a small portion of our lives. Um, but to her, it is to her. It's like, it's like that literally a blink of an eye for someone who lives yeah. thousands of years. And so, um, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Gesundheit. Oh God. Oh my goodness. Um, where was I at? Um, I completely lost my space in this doc that I wrote. She, up. uh, <laughs> breaks down crying at the funeral yes. and you see so much regret so much lamentation of the fact that she didn't truly get to know who was such a precious friend to her yes thank you um then 20 more years pass and she she ends up meeting um Hyder again now he's like really fucking old he's like what he would have been in his 90s at uh, this point well I made the assumption that, like, I was like, right, Himo, he's probably, like, 16 to 18, because, you know, the hero's journey, the heroes are probably pretty young, probably pretty young. Heiter, I'd probably say, is in his mid-20s at the beginning. Yeah. So, he's only, like, 10 or so years, or not even, at maximum, 10 more years older than um, Himo would have been. So, okay. I, I would say he's probably in his, let's see, if he was, like, 20, let's say 23, right, 25. 10 years, 35, 50, 85. Dude would have been like 100 and something. Yeah, he's he's way up there in age. But to be fair, he's also a uh, a priest. So Yeah, and yeah. not they, just any like... priest either. He was basically the pope. <laughs> See the pope, I mean, like super high I don't think he had that much power, but he was very well respected in his in his field. Oh well, yeah, because it's... he went and freaking fought the demon king. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's not again. just the fact that uh like he didn't just have that much power. He was, in fact, chosen by the god of that world. Like, the the priest the goddess. themselves. The goddess. The goddess. Um, you're right, you're right. Goddess uh, actually chooses the, them. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's super old now. Uh, and he's sort of infirm, but he's also taken in a war, orf war orphan named Fern. Um, who is adorable as hell when we first meet her. Oh my god, I want to just pinch those cheeks. Lolly um, Fern was just... My god. So cute! Absolutely. Um, but yeah, he's taken in this, uh, this war orphan, and he's sort of been training her to do a little bit of magic, but she also has sort of innate magical ability as well. Um... And he wants he wants Fern or Freerin rather to train Fern really really bad because he knows that Freerin is a very very powerful mage and she has the potential to be one of the greatest mages. Fern has the potential to be one of the greatest mages of all time. But that's not like the reason. Heiter that's not the reason. Asked, yeah. Yeah. No, he just wanted someone to take care of her after because 
Hyder is obviously he's very old, and at this point, it's like he's like, hey, he knew he was dying. Yeah, Free, he was like, Freeran, if you will train Fern, I will give you this grimoire that because the entire shtick of uh. That's like a Pavlovian phrase for her. Grimoire, huh? Yeah, she just, like, looks for grimoires because uh, apparently all of these grimoires were written by her teacher, but she's A lot of them turn out to be fake. Well, all of them are fake because she (laughs) that was her teacher. She's from 3,000 years ago. She knows that her teacher never wrote them. She learned from her, but it doesn't stop her from exploring and learning about magic because, like, that's kind of just free rent's thing go around the world and find new magic. Like, real magic just dropped. Like, real shit. <laughs> new DLC magic just dropped. Real? <laughs> so, uh, Hyter just gives her this book, and it's like, yeah, I'll give you this book, and it'll take you months to decode it, but in the meantime, while you're decoding it, could you please train Fern? But it was because he wanted someone to look after Fern after he passes, because he's like, I'm very old. Yeah. I'm going to die mm-hmm. soon. Yeah, and, and um, it, in the point of her translating this thing, he becomes bedridden. But like also, I bed. think that it was something that he wanted to do that was for the good of, what are you doing with your hand there? Chino? Yeah, Chinoda, what are you doing? <laughs> My knee is hand check. super, <laughs> hand knee is check, super bro, itchy. Hand che- bro, it just looked like you're doing this. Like, like what? <laughs> what's going on there, buddy? <laughs> buddy, that's over here. Not over here. I mentioned, okay. <laughs> I mentioned Fern and he couldn't control himself anymore. Oh, no, God. we're at Lolly Fern, Alex. We're not you. <laughs> oh. I rest my case. Anyway, uh, Hyder, I feel like he also wanted to do this because he underst- cause he went on the journey with Freerun and he understands mm. her personality. And it's like, I think he wanted to give her a reason for like just being able to experience traveling. Because without Fern being there, she wouldn't. I don't think that Freerun would have been able to get to uh, where she's going to get to mm. the same way. Yeah. Because, because of being right. with Fern. She's experienced a lot more of different parts of facets of life. Yeah. Because prior to this, she was kind of just wandering around and doing whatever. And she still just wanders around and does whatever. But with Fern in tow with her, she does have a timeline. Because it's like, okay, you can't spend the next 500 years just, like, casually walking to where you need to go. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what she did a lot during her life. She she mentions it several times how apathetic not just her, but her like species is because yeah, of their long species. lifespans. Um, where was I going with this? Uh, so yeah, so over the course of like several several months, uh, Freerun ends up does training Fern while also taking care of uh, Hyder in his final days, um, and she finally does translate the grimoire, and it's like, nah, there's no life extension stuff in here, like you said there was, and Hyder's like, yeah, I knew. You bitch. You bamboozled me. Well, but also, like, Hyder was afraid of dying, as most Mm. people do. You know, a lot of mortals have a mortal coil that they must eventually shed, and it's scary because what happens? We don't know. It's funny hearing a priest say that, though. Someone who believes in, like, an afterlife and God saying they're afraid of death. Yeah, and it's like they have actual magic bestowed to them from God. 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 Yeah. Yeah, so it's like kind of weird that you'd be afraid of dying but at the same time it's not that weird it, even if it's, you it's, knew, it's relatable well even if you knew there was an, a certainly an afterlife you know the next stage of your life that doesn't make it any less scary that when you die you leave everything here here yeah and especially for someone like Hyder, who you know he now has fern he has someone else that he cares about that he isn't ready to let go of you know and <laughs> yeah. it's about it's about letting go guys it's about you know, appreciating the time you have together. It's like there's a theme here or something. Yeah. Whoa, I my mean, God. Like, I, one of, one of the, the major themes of, of Free Run is about, like, remembering the past but also living in the present. Right. Yeah. And I think that, that this is, like, the first time you really, really see that. Where, like, I don't think – I don't think Hyder regrets his life, but he's still afraid of dying. Yeah, he's just a he's he's a person. He's a mortal. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, uh, Hyder dies. Um, and Freerin decides to just take a fern uh with her on on her journeys, and that's like that's pretty much like the setup to what we get going forward. Um, 
And then, of course, after this happens, uh, Freerun and Fern... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you're skipping the whole, like, Fern learning about, like, actual combat magic and using well, it in real true. life. True. Like, so... It's while getting there, she, but... Well, so the thing is... Well, no, you're about to go to the Aizen thing. That's like, no, before we get to Aizen, she did stuff. For Fern. Fern and hey, Freerun Aizen's cool, did though. Stuff. Aizen is really cool. His oh my god, his story is so good too. But yes. with uh with Fern in tow, it's like okay, so Fern grows up and she's kind of uh, I wouldn't say full of herself, but she's just like I I have magical powers, and I'm pretty strong at doing this. And everyone around me is like, oh, you, she has strong magical powers. So, but she doesn't really like magic. Like Fern does not like magic. She just kind of uses it because it's like oh, I'm good at it. It's a tool for her. That's all. Yeah, to her, it's a tool, which not is a like free run. It, well, and Fruit Run's fine with that. It's like, yeah, magic kind of whatever you make of it, but she's really strong at visualizing it. So she takes Fern through the uh, the woods and has to actually, like, fight a demon. Her first real no-shit demon. And quite literally, Fern was about to get fucking killed. Yeah, <laughs> she froze. Like, this, despite being as strong as she is, thinking, like, oh, I'm so strong with my magic, she would have been killed on the spot because she froze. And Fruit Run's no like, yeah. There, well, yeah, because it's like your first time fighting a demon, you don't know what to do. Like, even if you're, you could be the most, you could be the strongest person with the best arsenal of weaponry around you. You're mm. not, that does not going to mean shit when push comes to shove and you fucking freeze. You choke. Yeah. And that's a very realistic thing that happens to quite a lot of people. That's like but, um, how there's a lot of people who, like, academically, they know how to do a lot of things. But when they're put on the spot and they have to do it, they freeze. Because they haven't had to do, blank. they haven't. Yeah. They haven't had to apply what they've learned practically. Yeah, and it's like it's 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 about experience, life experience. It's something that you know it, you can forgive Fern for that because she's young. You know, you're young and dumb. You like you think you know everything, but it's like you've never actually experienced it. And then until you do, it's like you could really fuck up your day, especially or in your the life. Field, like like magic. You know, like a lot of magic users are. They have to deal with a lot of life and death situations, as we see later mm -hmm. on. Like, there's the whole freaking, you know, like, one thing we know is that um, even though the Demon King has been killed, there are still demons. They mm -hmm. just exist in, as natural, like, ecology in this world. So there's always a threat of demons. Yeah. That, that threat has not completely gone away in the world. The world is still far more peaceful than it was before. Now that the Demon King is dead, but it's not 100% peaceful. There's still demons around eating people. There's still threads. Uh, but now, yeah, and I want to talk about Aizen, because Aizen's really cool. <laughs> Bro, Aizen's a fucking Chad. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, we get snippets of Aizen here and there throughout the story, and it's like, he's literally built different. <laughs> I fucking love him. Dude's durability is, like, max, dude. It's so funny. Oh, a cliff? <laughs> Cliff dive. <laughs> just... He literally just dives off the cliff head first. It's like it just shakes it off. <laughs> I like how there's a there's a uh, a flashback later in the show where he does that and and uh, Free Run's like Hater was disgusted by that. <laughs> yeah, because like man, dwarves are built different, right? Like <laughs> he's a dwarf yeah. and he's diggy diggy hole, John. Like, uh, even then, it feels like uh, Aizen, even for a dwarf, it's just built different. I mean, yeah. he's. I think he's the only dwarf we see in the entire series. I don't, we mm, can't really. No, no there's the no. old man Vol that they meet later on at the one village. The guy Is who's like, dwarf? the guy who was, yeah. years old. Yeah, he was protecting the village uh, at his wife's request. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about he that fell guy. in love with a human and she died. Oh yeah, sad. There's so sad. much background stuff Sedge. that's so sad in this freaking. So we meet, we you know, she meets up Aizen again, and then we get into like a little backstory about Aizen, about like why did he even join the heroes party? And it's like Aizen is the biggest coward of them all. And it's like, yeah. well, well, why is that? Turns out, uh, when his dwarf village was getting attacked by demons, he fucking ran instead of fighting and saving his people. Like, dying with his people. He fucking ran. And it's like, what? Which, what? in the business, we call this foreshadowing. It's like, and it's like, yeah, Aizen, he's super strong, but also, he's the biggest coward of them all. Like, and it, it goes into flashbacks of, like, even when he was in the hero's party, it's like, there's super scary things happening, and he's fucking shaking. Like, he doesn't yeah. want to do these things, but he has to. Because he has this giant regret of letting his fucking village die. And I'm like, oh, bro, that's so sad. 
but he so also sad. recognizes his own cowardice and that in itself is a strength if you recognize yeah. that you're a coward you can learn from that and this like falls into um his apprentice yeah, he talks he talks about Stark before this, right? Like during he, he this, talks about yeah. having an apprentice before they actually meet him, but he doesn't uh name his apprentice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cuz we, we, we find later, out later that that apprentice is Stark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I was like, dude, it's been so long since I remember watching this part, like literally months, so I was like, yeah. I don't remember how it went. Um but no, when when um, when Freerun and Fern meet up with with Eisen, uh, they go on uh, a little mini quest to find a grimoire uh, that uh, apparently Old Man Vol is the person who originally told him about it. So it's the old dwarf they meet later is the one who told Eisen about this grimoire. Um, but anyway, they go find it, and um, apparently this grimoire is it details a way to speak with the dead. And it also details where all the dead souls go when they die, um, which is at a place called, I'm going to butcher this name, by the way, Oriol. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> anyway, it's at the very northernmost tip of the continent that they're on. And that gives Freerun a, a destination. And that's where they, they set off towards is uh, the, the northernmost point of this continent because she wants to go uh, meet with the spirit of Himmel and uh, try and actually learn about him and talk about her regret. <laughs> um, um. I'd like to point out that when they leave on this journey, Freerun is like very well aware that this could take 10 years or longer, just like their original quest to go face the Demon King. And Aizen even says, are you okay with taking Fern along on a journey that long? Because that's a significant portion of her life. And she's like, yeah, I think she could do it. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Fern has a choice. Like, she, not I mean, really. Fern she's always had a choice. Well, she had a choice of, like, not following Freerun, but it's like, well, this is her magic teacher, so it kind of, you got to do whatever your magic teacher is going to do. True. Kind of like how Freerun did with Flam, as we find out. Just kind of followed her around for several years. Well, but then we get the next. The next. Uh, go ahead, Chinoda. No, I was about to say no. Flam, uh, Flam uh, actually took her as an apprentice. Yeah, yeah but she still whole, chose like, to follow um, her for many, many years. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, because like <laughs> with um, similar to how how Fern had that freak out, it's like she has all this magic and stuff. Um, Free Run's village was attacked, and it was just like she just couldn't do anything to the demons, and just kind of the only reason she was like, "All right, I'm gonna learn to fucking kill demons." Like that's yeah. my purpose in life. <laughs> Which I'd she's, like to find. She's pretty good at it too. <laughs> yeah, the uh, genocider. pretty good. <laughs> Literally the, the demon slayer. genocider. <laughs> Freerun the Slayer. How she earned her nickname. Yeah, just killing thousands of demons just instantly. Just oh um, my god, dude. The, the that whole thing about. Is... That and you got to remember, about... she got her nickname over the course of ten years, not her whole lifetime. Because she was keeping on the down low until Himmel came to get her. So she committed Himmel's genocide like, over the course of 10 years. Himmel's like, I'm going to make you famous for killing people. They ain't people. They're animals. I, oh. They are. Hey, genocide oh apologist over here. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, my God. There's. I want to talk about that so much. That was such a cool... The, the first, like, demon battle scene that we see like with actual intelligent demons not the monster demons but like actual yeah. intelligent demons well we'll Bro, get to that that Let's, was so yeah, sick we're, we'll get but to yeah, it pretty quick right, here. so they they go find this grimoire and they're like all right we're gonna go to the northernmost continent so they they embark on a journey right and they meet stark at this village stark starker stark stark summer yeah I freaking i i thought stark was so fucking funny <laughs> I was like, I love that he's kind of just the, the um, like, butt of everyone's joke. Like, he just gets hit. He's like, why? Oh, please. Why? No. <laughs> but uh, yeah. similar to uh, Aizen, we meet Stark and we learn about his backstory about, you know, the same thing where, you know. His village was attacked he, and he ran away. Well, he, he comes from a long line of warriors. Yep. And who warrior raised, clan. 
warrior clan who are raised to fight demons and stark was always the weakest of them all because he didn't want to fight he was a scaredy cat and uh you know his family was hard on him about it other than his older brother who saw how and, hard he worked all the time yeah and it's like you're a hard worker and i see the potential in you it's like oh man that's great and then it goes to like oh the village is being attacked and literally everyone's gonna die so his older brother's like stark you need to run so stark runs and leaves run and don't look die. back and it's just like, bro, the the similarities between him and Aizen is just like, oh, oh it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, and cr- and Freerin too, because her village was attacked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny how there's a lot of like, people, their backstory is their village was attacked and they were one of the few survivors. Well, yeah, because in this world, the demons pose an actual problem. They're part of the yeah. ecology and is another part of the problem. They're just natural disasters sitting there. Yeah, waiting, waiting to, to happen. Humans. Yeah. Like, they feed on humans. Like, they, they talk about that. Yeah. Um, so in this whole like mini arc where we meet Stark and they have to fight the dragon that's kind of terrorizing the village or the the dragon that's not terrorizing the village because Stark lives in it. Um, it's the one part where I can genuinely say they kind of fucked up on the animation. The dragon yeah, fight. Yes. The, the dragon fight in particular. I liked like when we see the reveal of like what Stark has been doing. Like even though, uh, he's been he's been he's ran away from Aizen, but he's still been training every day to like fucking split the damn continent, bro. When he does yeah. the slash, it's like, yo, what? Yo, what? This what? man is all this fucking powerful. Like and you yo, see how much the... he's done, you're like, oh my god. But yeah, when yeah. they do the uh the actual dragon fight, it's like Freerun could have just killed the dragon, just bodied it, no problem, yeah, didn't matter. But she didn't want to because it's like, well, this is more important for Stark because he needs to understand that he is actually strong. He's not weak. He is strong. And he will continue to get stronger. And uh, so it's like she she understands that there are like just with Fern, like just like with Fern, that people need to experience these type of experiences themselves because without them, they wouldn't grow. Mm-hmm. And it's like this life or death situation. And. <laughs> Yeah, it was, oh, bro. The animation was rough. I was like, oh god, here, here's where it all comes apart at the seams. This <laughs> so, is goddamn madhouse. Mad <laughs> Why did you do this? <laughs> I will say, even though it was the weakest part of the entire anime, I still thought it was decent, and I enjoyed it myself. It wasn't like unwatchably bad, but it was noticeably no, no. less quality than we've yeah. seen before. All I'm saying is, they literally later on in like the later season uh later of in the season they do a flashback where Himal and them are fighting a dragon as well they animated that way better than they animated well, this they animated fight. the hell out of that shit i'm just saying i'm just pointing that out yeah but it's like you but know this it's is the never... one hiccup in the entire season where the animation quality dips yeah it, it's like it, it's honestly where i thought we were gonna see like all right they ran out of budget finally (laughs) because at at the beginning they didn't have that much they weren't again there's not a lot of action sequences um no the there's maybe like 12 in the entire run and like three or four of those are pretty quick action sequences yeah it's um short and quick action scenes that matter was it before they met stark that they fought the dude that one demon that was going to revive yeah yeah. track Zoltrak? Yeah, that's yeah. where, yeah, that's where she demon. learns the Zoltrak. The demon's name is Qual. So, was that before they met um, Stark? Stark? That was before, yes. they met, they, they, before they met Stark, yeah. Yeah, like, again, another cool thing about how they do that, right? Because, uh, so, it's like, this demon from A80? Let's see, 50 plus 20? 70. So, this demon from, like, 70 years ago was so yeah. powerful that no one could actually kill him so they had to seal him right and it's like mm-hmm. okay free like okay it's been about 80 years the seal is about to give up like i gotta go finish this job that i took <laughs> on 80, 80 years ago i gotta kill this guy and it turns out like this man was the bane of everyone's existence back 80 years ago because no one could defend against this, this uh this demon he had this because demons pursue one thing in life and that is like the ultimate power uh and this guy specifically was uh doing attack magic that was called uh zoltrak and it's like the strongest most unblockable strong just con- condensed fucking cannon beam and we're just like oh man how strong is this guy and then we-, we get to the fight and it turns out like 
he's weak as shit. <laughs> it's like, what? It's not that he's weak. It's time has moved on without him. Well, what it was, was after Free Run fought him, she helped other um, magic scholars and stuff understand how Zoltrak worked and reverse engineered it to create defensive magic that would be able to defend against Zoltrak. Quite literally, Zoltrak, this one OP ability that he had back 80 years ago, is now just considered regular attack magic. Like, mm. this is just normal now for everyone. It's like, bro, the, 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 the fact that they included this to show, like, the passage of time, how things have, like, it's nothing stays the same. Yeah. That's so good. I love it. It is. It is. I absolutely adore impressive. it. It's also funny that he never bothered to, like, develop a defense to his own attack. <laughs> well, why would he? He yeah, had he never exactly. needed to. And that's one of the other things about the demons. Like, they're very arrogant because they're like, we're strong. It's like, they're just like animals where they have an instinct and they kind of just crave blood and murder and stuff. But they, for some reason, they can talk. But it's like, just because they can talk doesn't mean make them any more intelligent than, like, an animal would be. Like, you can yeah. fool them. You can trick them. You can do things to demons. As Qui-Gon Jinn once said, the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, Misa thinks different. <laughs> um, Yeah, meeting Stark was, was really, I think, a really good, you know, bad dragon fight animation aside, that little mini arc was really good. Yeah, and I like the parallels between him and Aizen with the whole, like, mm. being cowards, you know? Yeah. But also becoming strong because they're cowards. It's just like, again... Great themes. I, I like the storytelling, and yeah. I, I like the addition of Stark because it adds a different dimension to, like, because Korea, you know, he's kind of just, like, a normal guy that's just following them along, and he, he's treated like the punching bag of the group, unfortunately, but it's also pretty fucking funny. I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. funny because uh, the longer you watch, the more you realize how impactful Stark is. Yeah, in terms like of how, their journey and uh, how, well, who he is as a person, and as as the journey like goes forward, you re you you kind of watch him grow in real time, and it's it's fun to watch. Um, he does end up decide Stark does end up deciding to travel along with um Freerun and Fern, um to the north, um, and that's when we get what I think is probably my favorite story arc in the entire uh, run of this season, and that is uh, the Demon Envoy and the fight with Aura. I oh fucking God. love this shit. So, this is like, what, 11? This 11 is episodes like, in now? 10 we're episodes? We're like 10 to 11 episodes in. Like, the, the, the Aura fight was just like, okay, people mm. have been hyping up oh. like, oh, we're gonna see Free Run unleash her fucking, all of her powers and this and that, and I'm just like, okay. Like, I... So far, we've only seen, like, three battle sequences so far, I, I would say. Like, the, the Zoltrak thing, the dragon thing, and I guess technically when Fern was about to be attacked by that thing and Freerun kills it. Yeah. Like, yeah. There, here are your three quote-unquote combat sequences. And none of them have been impressive so far. But as we understand, like, Freerun's super strong and she's just kind of been holding back. As we know, Freerun... She suppresses her she, mana. Yeah, well, she's like, she could have rolled any of the fights so far so it's like all right here is a uh one of the people from back in the day it's like okay there's another demon from back in the day so let's see because we didn't get to see free run fight against zoltrak we saw fern do that fern had yeah. to test her metal so it's like we we don't know what the limit of her power is so it, it was interesting because it's like oh aura has this ability where it's like all right as a demon she has a magical artifact tool. that yeah. makes tool that's like it measures mana and basically if you have less mana than her whoever has the more mana wins in this compelled duel and you can control them to do anything which yep. aura uses to like create an undead army which is freaking sick yeah because cool of the people fuck. around her because she hasn't fought anyone anywhere near as powerful as freerun uh like every she clears because like her mana is way more powerful than anything else around her yeah and like uh so they get to this town that they learn that is apparently uh, in peace talks with demons. And yeah. at this point, we all we understand is like, okay, well, the non-humanoid demons are just monsters. They, they just want to kill things. I'm like, okay, they're not humanoid, but these are the humanoid demons. And it's like, they can speak. Are they, any, they can speak. They, they, well, I mean, technically, Qual could speak too, but he was not humanoid. True. 
Uh, so it's like they basically just look like humans with like horns, added parts. Yeah, yeah, they just have horns and wings and stuff. But they they dress in clothes. They they have they apparently have parents and fathers and this and that and. You know, it's like, oh, we, we're tired of war, guys. We're, we're trying to enter peace talks. And Freerun's just kind of like, she. the minute she sensed the demon, she just went, like, fucking Not let me even execute the minute, this the second. She went into attack mode. And I <laughs> oh was my like, god, god damn, you bloodthirsty. And it's she like, just went, like, all oh, John Wick on these goddamn demons. Like, just no, pulling out really guns. Did. Like, don't yeah. fucking move. And I'll do it. Like, I'll do it. <laughs> then there, this town, like, feudal lord duke or whatever is like, oh, you can't attack demons. We're in peace talks. And then Freerun's just like, well, that's a mistake you're going to come to regret. And then we get more flashbacks. <laughs> so like, anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> well, what's crazy is we, we get – so <laughs> there's, like, three demons, right, that are, like, the peace talkers for, for Aura before we get to yeah. the Aura fight. And – they're all like looking at Free Rin. They're like, "Oh yeah, she's she's Free Rin. Like, where have I heard that name before? I, I, who who the hell is that? You know." And one of the guys goes and tries to kill uh, Free Rin, and she's like tied up. And she's just like, "Your first mistake was thinking that I was tied up." And then she fucking kills the dude. <laughs> it's like what? Because <laughs> it's like, why did? Obviously, we know that Free Rin's strong. So why did she let herself get captured by the, the humans instead of like just killing these demons? And it's like, well, because she first needed to understand what was going on because like she as she understands it like demons don't change and we get a flashback for um when Hemil first discovers a demon child and Hemil wants to spare the demon child because he's like you know oh well it's just, it's a, just child. a child yeah and freerin you know has been alive for thousands of years and has dealt with demons for thousands of years so she quite understands them a lot better than humans could ever because they haven't been around for 3,000, 2,000 years to understand the natures of these demons. And it, it makes sense, you know? Like, stories that happened 80 years ago, like, you can tell it to me, but I don't understand. I, I don't understand the profound effect that it would have on a person because I didn't experience it. That's just that's just the It's just a way story of to us from yeah, a different it's time. It's the natural way of a, a human life. So... Like seeing the uh the backstory, and then like then Hemo freaking oh my god, dude! And then they come back to the village, and that demon girl literally just started killing people. It's like well, burnt the chief's house me. down. Yeah, because they it's like oh well they, I I just you know I killed one of their kids, and they, you know, I'm the replacement, and it's like this and that. And it's like what? <laughs> and as it turns out, demons don't think the same way as humans do. They they don't think. Like they don't place the same they, value on life as non-demons yeah. do. Well, they, to them, everything is like cut and dry. It's yeah. black and white. There, there are no shades of gray. No, everything is just black and white. I'm strong, you're weak, I kill you. Uh, you lost something because of me, then I give you something in return. Like, it's just, that's it. There, there's no empathy, there's no nothing, and it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Um... Which is again a reason why Freerin, the second she notices the demon, just pulls out her staff and is like, I'll kill it. <laughs> That's so why she gets get thrown in the, jail um, in the first place. So then we get to the uh the other two people, like, all right, so now there, there's three demons, but now um the guy who goes tries to go assassinate Freerin because he knows no better gets freaking insta killed by her. <laughs> Like, crazily, like, yeah, you know, just because I'm tied up doesn't mean I'm weak. It's like, she does it on purpose, though, because she's, uh, as we learn, she suppresses her mana. So demons can see mana, but she has learned to suppress it because that's the one thing that made it so she could kill demons a lot easier. Yeah, because demons of how can't arrogant it. they are. Well, demons, just like animals, uh, they will run if they know they can't win. So you got to make it look like you're easy pickings. So that way you can bamboozle them and actually kill them. Yeah. They will and never suppressing mana fight. is something demons can't do. Yeah. So, well, they it's not that they can't do it. It's that uh, demons would never do that. They would yeah. never consider that. Because to them, boasting about your mana is like, that's their it's life. Their that's pride. their personality. Yeah. That's, that's, their, their that's their big dick swinging contest right there. Yeah. It literally is. So then we get like Stark matches up with the uh, demon girl who's like, I can copy abilities of people I fought before. So that she copies uh, Aizen. So that's like, this is Stark's moment to like rise above his master, which was like super cool. I, I thought that was a cool fight sequence. Yeah. He was like, all right, 
then I'll just tank the damage and then fucking counterattack you twice as hard, so that way you'll instantly die. <laughs> it's like, yo, he really yeah. learned from Ryzen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> just like let let her cleave me in half, so that way her thing gets stuck for a split second, so I can cleave her in half. Like, yo, <laughs> damn, Stark, you're human, man. You're not a dwarf. You don't have the same <laughs> resistances, man. But that was a cool fight. And then, uh, yeah, with Fern, like learning about demons from free run and understanding like you got to make sure they underestimate you to set it up for that moment you can take it all back from them like that was yeah, you have cool. to make you have to make an opening and then take it the second you see it and that again super cool yeah that that just that fight alone with with uh fern and stark facing those two demons that was cool on its own and then Freerin goes and fights Aura, and it just dials it up to 11. And this and is all this happening is... at the same time is what's really yeah. cool. While Fern is fighting uh, the male demon, um, when she's floating, that's when the male demon's like, oh, fuck, I know he where realized. I know Freerin <laughs> from. He, now he understands who Freerin is. <laughs> yeah. Because he under, uh, cause like, where have I seen this attack patterns before? This this person fights like someone I've seen before. It's like, oh god. Oh and god, that's when we know. get the true sort of title drop of uh, the first major title drop of the um, anime, where it's like, this is Freyren, the fucking genocider. I forgot what the actual thing was, but like, it's like Freyren yeah. the Slayer. Freyren the, the Slayer. Thank you. And it's like. It was such a badass moment. It was like, no, she is that one. She is that Chad. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, the the fight with um, Fern was just like, she, it, it was like close, but at the same time, it was never close. Hmm. Because yeah. like this guy with the... Um, Oh my god, I'm skipping past the other part that was so fucked up. So, as we learned about, like, the demons, like, they just kind of make shit up. And yeah. it's crazy, because the demon uh, envoys are just like, Hey, you know, I, I lost my father in, in the war, and this and that, and I was raised. And then, like, when it cuts to a different thing, and we learn about, like, demons don't have familial ties, the uh, his there's, like, the main envoy dude, his lackeys ask him, like, What's a family? What's a father? They're like, I don't know, but apparently when you say that, it makes humans trust you. It's like, what? Yeah, it truly <laughs> emphasizes the fact that, no, you can't reason with them. These are actual animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just because animals that can talk, and it's like, that's so trippy. Again, for a human, you wouldn't be able to know that because you don't live long enough to, for people to experience the same type of thing. Yeah. As human. Yeah. Like, it was my first thought as well. I'm like, why aren't they talking to them? Why aren't they just, you know, figure out a way to coexist? And it's like, no, the anime does an excellent job of actually like, answering no. that question. Yeah, it's like, you can't coexist because they literally are just animals. Just because they can speak does not make them any less of an animal. And it's like, oh, yeah. that's fucked up. To, yeah, to say the least. Um... But then we yeah, finally the, get to the aura fight, and it's just like that fight was I, something else, man. Well, I remember the the Duke or whatever his name was. I don't remember the actual guy, the Castellian. Graf. His title was Graf, but I forget what his name was. I'm gonna call him the Castellian. Um, Fair enough. Because that's the the person who controls the the town, whatever. The Castellian. Uh, he's just like, oh, there's a reason why we haven't been able to to fight Aura because she has this magical artifact. And, you know, like, as strong as Freerun is, I don't know if she's going to be stronger than this demon that's lived 500 years. So then Freerun shows up to fight Aura, and Aura is just like, Freerun, huh? It's unfortunate I didn't get to fight you at your peak. And it's like, you've lived for an extra 80 years? That means nothing to me, Freerun. I'm a demon that's lived 500 years. And she's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> fucking <laughs> dead. <that> <laughs> and, then she, and then she's like, she unleashes her fucking mana, and then she's like, Aura, you may have lived for 500 years, but I've lived for thousands. And then she's like, Whoa! and then she's like, kill yourself. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you thought it was going to be a sick fucking well animated fight. But it's like, it starts off with like, oh, what's going to happen? And then we go to a flashback about Free Ren talking with um, Flam. 
and we're just like it's just, we're just learning backstory and then all of a sudden it cuts back to the fight and that's when free run unleashes her power and just tells aura kill yourself and it's like what <laughs> that's it there's no magical crazy fight it's like nope she just told her to kill herself and like, she does <laughs> and then she just takes the knife just and i'm like yo it was Damn! so quick so at so her own head disturbing off. So at first I was a little disappointed with a flashback, right? Like mid fight. Cause I'm like, dude, I hate when shows do that when it's like, don't tickle my epic... balls like that, please. Yeah. However, I, I learned to appreciate these things that free run does. Cause it's like, it's never been about the battles. It's never been about these hype moments. Mm -hmm. It's the world building and the storytelling and the pacing have all, it has a purpose. It does. Because I know that some people were disappointed that the aura fight was just like, it was just instantly over when free run just unleashed her freaking mana and was like, kill yourself. Mm -hmm. But to me, I'm like, dude, I don't think you understand how like this, um, what, what is the Northern plateau city? Oh, craft. Oh, that's the, that's the, the dude's name, the local Lord. I yeah. call them Castellian yeah. because that's basically what a local Lord is. But, uh, yeah, like I was a little disappointed that we didn't get to see free run fight. However, it just shows how powerful she is. Like it, we've been always been told how powerful she is because again, mm. she's known as you know Freerun the Slayer. They've been hyping it up for the last two episodes because when the uh, the envoy people realize, like at least the dude who realize who he is, like oh fuck, <laughs> Aura might die, <laughs> 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 and just like just how nonchalantly Freerun wins that battle is just amazing. I loved it. Like yeah. it all makes sense. It was it, never it supposed to be a fight so well. that Freerun had to show her overwhelming power by showing magic. She just had to exist to win this fight. Yeah. Um, now, please tell me. Please tell me you've seen the edit someone made of that scene using low tier god. Telling people to go yeah. kill themselves. <laughs> no, I don't think I've seen this. Me. Oh, it's, it's so great. good. It is legit. That that fantastic. edit that someone made is so good, where they just have Freerun being low tier god, telling people, <laughs> "You go kill yourself." Honestly, uh, did you guys see all the memes about Zoltrak Forty Seven by chance? No. No. What is that? <laughs> Basically, all Fern, whenever she uses attack magic, she's using Zoltrak 47. Basically, AK 47, but like. Zoltrak. Oh, AK 47. Yeah. Got it. It's, it was a yeah, whole thing. I, I the amount of memes this, meme. this show has produced, it's now, fucking peak. In, in, all, in all seriousness, around this time, uh, when this episode came out, <clears throat> the, the fight with Aura, um, it was around the time where I first took notice of the English dub that they made for Freerun. I have to say, kudos to the dub cast because they're all really well cast, and I think the dub has done really well. Um, I don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head who it is that voices Freerun, but she does an excellent job in this scene. Oh, for the English dub? Yeah, for the English dub. I, I have not, I've seen one sequence in English, and I was just mm. like, Oh, it doesn't sound terrible. Then I went back to Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, I have listened to a decent bit of the English dub. It is fantastic. Like, no matter what, mm. either way you listen to this, you're going to enjoy it. And then we get to the section of the show where I think a lot of people were like, this is the, probably the weakest part of the show. Uh, because it's, it's traveling kinda... to the Northern Lands. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, it's just traveling. Like, it's just talking, traveling. There's no more fight sequences. It's village no hopping. Actions. Yeah, it's village hopping. Other than the one thing that happens, which is, like, the um, where we get to learn more about, like, the healing powers and, like, the goddess powers and stuff like that. Yeah. That one. And we also kept... see the, the – so we have that backstory where they're traveling the, to to the village where um, Himo tried to pull the sword out of the stone, and he couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. You find out he that didn't get the hero scene. sword. Now we cannot we cannot over overlook the fact that they meet motherfucking Dio in a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> fucking craft. <laughs> Dude and is like he opens his mouth and I'm like, that's Dio <laughs> Wasn't expecting so, that. It's crazy because it's like we later on learn who Kraft actually is, and it's like mm. he's also a living legend, just like Free Rain yeah. is. It's like, oh, even he was older the, legend. Uh, from... He's an even older legend, and he's also just traveling around. Just like I, he's a priest, I think, right? He's a yeah, he's, he's a priest now. He's a monk. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, something else we learn like right before this um, is that elves are kind of going extinct. Um, Freerun says it's been hundreds of years since she's even laid eyes on another elf. Um, and it's that they're so apathetic that they don't even have a reproductive like instinct anymore. Yeah. Which it's makes like, sense. <laughs> yeah. Like, why do I need to spawn children if I live for thousands of years? Yeah, if I'm going to live for 10 or 15,000 years, why do I need to even have children? The fact that they even managed to survive so long is uh, amazing by itself. Yeah. Um, which I, I, I was kind of surprised that Freerun didn't make a bigger deal out of me meeting another elf. Because it's outside of her, it's the first elf we've ever seen in the show. I think it's because of uh, how apathetic she truly is. Yeah, it makes sense to her her uh, character, I suppose. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I just believe that it funny she says that, that she doesn't Stark like meeting. Fern. So I, I believe that Freerun says she doesn't like meeting other elves because, like, she thinks they're all weird. <laughs> all <laughs> elves are weird, which is kind of true based on the elves that we meet in the entire series. Like, yeah, they're, they're all kind of weird. Ironic included. coming from her. <laughs> yeah, I know. This bitch who, like, every time she sees a uh, fucking mimic is like, well, maybe, maybe this time. <laughs> I the love our autistic of it boomer being... grandma. <laughs> yeah. The the, uh, the fact that it's not an absolute 0% chance that it, there could be a magic grimoire in here means I need to open it. It's like free there, right there is a non-zero chance that there could be a magical grimoire in here. But there's a much bigger chance that it could be a mimic. I'm taking that chance. I'm waiting for the time when eventually it it actually is a grimoire instead of a mimic. Like it only has to happen one time and she'll be fucking validated forever. You realize it's going to be like how the manga ends, right? It's like that's going to be the final panel. She opens up a chest and there's just a grimoire in <laughs> God, it. God, I hope so. Bro, that's that's the that's actual be... end of the journey. Yeah, that's got to be how it ends. If if they if they if they commit to this shtick all the way through the story, that's got to be how it ends. Okay. Yeah, um, the um, the, they get the stuck actual, in like, the. Sorry, go on. What do y'all um, go ahead? No, I was the actual say... arc of the uh, the oh, travels Christ. in the northern lands is yeah. like, they get stuck on uh, a mountain for six months because of winter, L a literal yeah, winter. There's storm. a freaking blizzard. There's a yeah. blizzard outside. Yeah, which you know happens in the north in the mountains sometimes. And free runs just like, oh, guess we can't do nothing. Go to sleep. <laughs> Yep. Read magical books, go to sleep. <laughs> like she'll nonchalantly. That's how she spends her time anyway. Like that's how she has always spent her time, just nonchalantly reading magical grimoires and, and sleeping. Just sleeping. Man, what a life! <laughs> what a life! I'd love to Bro, have that life. Same. <sighs> yeah, like because of how low impact and there's like there's no stakes involved in a lot of the travels in the northern lands. It's it's very uh, a very boring slow. part, I'd say. It's yeah. very slow. However, they do quite a lot of exposition during this oh like, there's a there's a ton of over the course i think this lasts like i want to say six or seven episodes um there's a ton of character development there's a ton of world lore that gets dumped on you um but not all at once like there's not one episode that's just strictly devoted to it you get a constant drip feed of it through the entire sequence i just feel like um I understand why people said this is like the boring part, like the the snooze fest, because you know, again, not a lot happens. Aura, yeah, yeah, not a lot happens because after the aura thing, we're just like, yo, wow, let's go. I like get you've it. heard of a breather episode. Here's a breather arc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, the show is about the journey. It's it's not about it the is. destination. It's about the journey. And yeah, while we're going through this, we also learn quite a lot about like the northern lands, like how uh you know like the the whole Hemel story. Like that's that, yeah. that's a great freaking piece of information to learn. He didn't pull the sword from the stone, and yet he still became the hero. It's also and the it's same like, uh, episode where we uh, learn uh, about Stark's background as well. Oh yeah, because it's like yeah. uh, it, it relates. It's like you don't yeah. just because you're a coward, and just because you don't have like the the quote unquote the uh, the right, right, the the God given right or whatever, or the charge doesn't mean you can't be a, a hero. It doesn't mean you can't be a brave person. It's about your yeah. determination. At least at, as Hemel has proven, it's about your determination. Yeah, he even says that, what was it, the phrase that Hemel says in the flashback? It's okay, I can still be a fake hero and save everybody. 
Yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> fake hero is still a hero. And it's like, bro. Yeah. It's like. Mm. <laughs> Was it? Is it True. also in this sequence that we learn that. Is, is this the, the part where uh, we had the flashback where Himmel puts the ring on Furin's finger and she's like completely oblivious? Mm. I feel like it's during the sequence. Yes, yes, it is because that's when uh, it's when uh, Stark's birthday is happening and uh, yes. there's a silver bla- bracelet. Yes, and uh, that's that's also where the 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 thing in the corner with uh, uh, Freerin comes from, trying to give him the uh, the potion <laughs> the, that dissolves clothes. The potion that only <laughs> dissolves clothes. Yeah, men like these sorts of things. <laughs> men love these sorts of gifts. <laughs> they just got and that giant just... smug grin. <laughs> Fern just Fern, grabbed, like <laughs> dumped it on Freer and like Freer and you're an idiot. <laughs> and we also that we've, seems... that was like the only bit of fan service we actually got in this. Au contraire, mon frère. Au contraire, because the person who is has animated this, I don't know if these scenes actually come from the manga or not. I have not read it yet. I probably will eventually. No, this is the, that's the same episode. That's the same yeah, episode where is. they do the foot, the feet shot. It's the yeah, exact it's same yes. episode. And that is not the only foot shot we get. So whoever was the director on this, bless you. <laughs> oh, oh, ew, this, Alex. You know what? That, Most animes have a beach episode. This was the beach episode of Free Ring. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> the foot episode. The feet Outside episode. of the foot thing, because there's a lot of feet. In there's a free lot Ren. of shots of feet in Free Ring, man. This fuck, was this directed by... Uh, uh, Oh god, I've forgotten his name. Uh, movie Tarantino. director, yeah, Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino, thank you. Yeah, Tarantino. <laughs> his name just completely left my head. <laughs> it's like it's directed by. Now you're gonna Tarantino. say um, Hideaki? Is it Hideaki? Um, Hideaki Miyazaki, whatever. The guy who made Elden Ring and El- uh, Dark Souls and stuff. Oh, oh Miyazaki. Yeah. Uh, Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Yeah, it yeah. is Miyazaki. Something Miyazaki. Yeah. I don't remember his. Does first, he like? Uh, does he like feet too? Bro, there's a whole ass meme. Yeah, it's a, like, it's a huge oh, thing. Okay. It's like, okay. all right, this this main character lady who helps you level up, she needs to n- be footless, like or um, oh. shoeless, shoeless. You, we have to. She has to have bare feet. She has to. I'm just and saying, just there's like, at least five throughout the entire run of this season of Free Run. There are like six or seven shots of Free Run's feet, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> not oh just God. her either. <laughs> well, oh not not God. only her feet. Anyways, oh. Uh, we move on no, to the I, next that, part. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, That's right. that flashback where where we see Himmel basically proposed to Freerin and she's oblivious. I'm like, God damn, girl, <laughs> you've ruined this man. <laughs> so I many say different she's times. Oblivious too. though, because like, no, she is even, oblivious. In the moment, she was. In the moment, she was, but she understands it later, and that's why she cherishes that bracelet. Yeah, well, that the ring is what what ring, she because the, they have that that sequence where they are they're in the carriage and she drops the uh the ring and she can't find it and she's like desperately looking for it. Uh, oh yeah, because the carriage gets attacked by that stupid bird, yeah, the giant bird. Um, <laughs> I love how they're that thing's getting carried off and she's like, "I was careless." <laughs> it's like, "Bitch, please." Anyways, anyway, moving on from moving that on whole to the part, next part, we get to meet Sign. Oh yeah, I oh, love yeah, Sign. Other, he has um... so much fun. That so is also finally... something that happens. <laughs> they finally recruit a priest because they mm. they need uh they had a warrior. There's Freer and the mage, and also Fern the mage, but now they need a priest to complete the collection. Because mm. I guess yeah. technically in this instance, the hero of the party is Freerin. So Fern yeah. is the mage, Freerin is the hero, Stark is the and warrior, we... Stark is the frontliner. The they call him frontliner. The warrior, yes. Yeah. Yeah. His eyes in 2.0. Like he literally is. Is. <laughs> is. Yeah, he literally is. Uh, yeah, sign and is... complimentary uh, to that sign. <laughs> Hider 2.0. Yeah, kinda. Even worse. Uh, even more yeah. corrupt priest. Except his fixation, instead of being on alcohol, is on older women. <laughs> Which is uh, ironic because that's what... Alcohol as well. That's what... <laughs> That's oh, yeah, what Freerin is. Spell that. Oh my god. The freaking I'll use the ancient technique to seduce any man that my teacher taught me. Choo! Choo! <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the flashback. 
And then you have the flashback where they're doing it on Himmel and he just falls over. <laughs> he just he died. <laughs> and Stark and Fern just having such an egregious reaction. Like, oh my god, that was so lewd. It was like, oh my god, it's too powerful. It's too powerful. And then there's Side who's just like, eh? What does like, this lolly baba want? <laughs> I love that even Fern is like, if she had done that on me, it would have worked. And I'm like, Ao, <laughs> mommy daughter action. Ao, Ao, what? <laughs> Y'all need to calm down. Y'all need too Jesus. Many, I've seen too many free run feet. I can't calm down. <laughs> anyway, John is just rolling his eyes every time I say feet. I'm just. Uh... I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that that little like mini arc was signed though is pretty good because like again it goes back to that theme of, of regret and he obviously regrets not <clears throat> letting his going with his brother because his brother was given the opportunity to go to like the royal capital become a monk there or a priest or whatever and he didn't go for his brother's sake because he didn't want to take his brother away from his home hometown. Yeah, not his and, brother, his uh, friend. No, 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 no. No, brother. He has... So there's two people. So there's... Sign has two regrets. Technically three. Uh, his yeah, first well. regret was um, basically not going with his friend. So his friend wants to embark yeah. on a journey. And he didn't go with his friend. And he hasn't seen his friend in, like, what, 10 years? So it's like, you yeah. know, it's kind of alluded to that his friend is probably fucking dead. But... Um, you know, Sign is just like, I've never, I haven't heard from this guy in a while. And he said he'd be back and he never came back. So that's one. His first regret was not saying yes and leaving the village because he was too scared. And then his second regret was because he was too scared to leave the village, his brother understood that. And his brother was able to like, um, was told that you could get a high ranking position in the capital, but his brother didn't want to go because he was like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to rip my brother sign away from the village life that he loves. So that was his second regret because he's like, my brother stifled his own life for mine, for my comfort. And it's just like, bro, that that sucks, dude. And his third regret is not getting with a MILF. <laughs> yes. <laughs> honestly, this the biggest regret of his life. Down which honestly bad. would be a huge regret of mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> Literally goes to a new village. Any MILFs in the area? <laughs> like, man, there's the hot cougars waiting for you in your area. Just click here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I like that stuff with sign because that, that happens over a few episodes. I genuinely thought he was going to be like, in like a new permanent cast member. Like yeah, he was gonna... I thought so too. But then but like, no, it's it like, like four his... episodes later, he's like, bye guys. <laughs> well, because so he, he gets convinced by free Ren to like leave. And he's like, why me? And he's like, because I think you did, you needed to push just like I did. Cause it's like, she sees uh, a version, a past version of her in him where it's like, she didn't want to do these things because it's like it's not what I want to do, but it's like something that you need to do. And she didn't was the one that, that gave her the push to go on the journey. Yeah, and you know, just and in in a weird like, I wasn't joking when I said Free Ren is the hero of the, the this new party because she is basically taking all of Himo's teachings that she's gone through with him in the that ten year journey and applying it to everyone else, mm -hmm. saving people, sending them um. Like, oh my God! What's he? Oh, oh! Hi, Tommy. Oh, <laughs> mom, actually. Yeah, it's mom. Oh, I thought it was yeah. Tommy. Yeah, but yeah, she's uh, you know, she's making good on her promises to go fight demons, training people, giving them life advice, and she continually does this. She's basically just again Hemo 2.0, as everyone else is the 2.0 versions of the last Heroes Party, and it's it's really cool because she regrets not cherishing the time that she had with Hemo and like she she regrets just not understanding him but mm -hmm. as she's going on this journey she's understanding Hemo she's doing things that he was doing and like it's just like oh this is such a beautiful story like there's so much going on here and it's just like it's it's free Rin's journey oh my god I can't I cannot ex I cannot gush about this show more enough. Like every <laughs> single moment I have loved because it everything leads into what it's about, which is mm -hmm. her journey to understanding Hemo. Like from the very start, what is our main goal? Is that she, or rather I should say, her, her main uh, regret is that she didn't understand Hemo. But as she's taking this journey, whether or not she knows it or not, 
she's replicating everything he did. She's getting closer to understanding she's going him on the same by thing. every episode. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like she's having her own hero's journey, but it's more of like a, a, a soul-searching journey. Yeah. But she does it's not she like, doesn't know it, and it's great. <laughs> it's it's not a it's not a journey to defeat like a arch enemy. It's a journey to find yourself. Yeah. Myself could probably be the worst enemy I have, the biggest enemy I that's, have, actually. That's true. To be honest. That's, you know what? That's that's very, very true. Um Yeah. Um Next arc. Uh, so well, yeah, well, I guess finishing that off before we go off to the final arc, which is the, the first class mage exam stuff. Nah, um, you gotta talk about the um the uh royals or not the royals, the uh nobles that um uh, took Starkin to play as a lost son. I love that arc. It, it was one that, of my favorites. That was, that was such a good episode. Oh my god. Because <laughs> again, it was yeah, episode learned... 14 actually, Privilege of the Young. Oh my god, was that all that the way was back only, then? Yeah, that was yeah. only 14. Oh my god. Yeah, that was more of the uh, the backstory about like, again, the Northern Lands, people constantly at war and all these demons fighting and stuff. And, there's, and it's like Again, we think of a, a hero's journey to defeat the demon lord. Like, and oh, then no, everyone lived I'm happily. sorry. Smells like trouble. Not 14. Anyways. So in in a lot of hero's journeys, we they get to the end. They beat the big bad. And everyone lived happily ever after, right? That's what we expect and what we want. But reality is way, way different. It's like not everyone lived happily ever after because demons still exist. There may and not the be collateral any... damage from your journey. <laughs> Well, there's there may not be a demon king, but there are still demons, and they continually just want to kill humans. And it it hasn't changed that the uh, northern lands are still bad because the demons are up there, and they want to continually just kill people. And every day, mm -hmm. people are still fighting a war, and it's just like, you know, it, it's it's kind of messed up because like you would think that with all these first class mages and stuff who apparently are as strong as free as they think they are they're as strong as free they would be able to go and fight these demons as well but it's like nope even them like even these people who are considered um second class third class mages and stuff there's just too many demons which like leads me into my next thing about like what are these demons like do we how are they born they're just kind of natural phenomena that happened the forces yeah. of nature man yeah they're just a thing of nature they're a, a calamity that just happens which I'm yes. sure there's a lot more to it. It just, just haven't revealed to us yet. Yeah, maybe we'll find out eventually. I what hope so. That's all about. Um, but yeah, well, that, as it that... stands, like demons can give birth to other demons, but they don't raise them. They kind of just give birth to them and then leave. Yeah, and it's like so. How You're are on your demons own. actually born? Yeah, it's just like I don't. So it's like it's a very interesting ecology of um of the demons. Like how how do they work? Yeah. Uh, that that little like I think it's only like a single episode where that happens the the Stark being turned into a noble. Yeah. Um, it's a really impactful episode though. Um, it's very sad. It's very sad. <laughs> yes. It was like, sad, but um, at the same time, it was great because uh, they needed money to continue their journey, and um, yeah, one like, of the nobles even... just saw Stark and was like, "Oh, he can do as the fake uh, as a fake son because I lost my son." Yeah, and it's like it starts off as like you think it's going to be a funny, like relaxing episode, and it's like, nope, just sad. Like, oh, nope, just sad boy well, hours. Well, because it's like we go into uh, with the whole noble thing with uh, Stark. It's like he never had loving parents, and here is a man willing to use him as um, his son to be a loving parent. But Stark realizes, like, I can't be your son. It's yeah. to help this man get over the death of his son, and it's like, oh, and it's funny that so the longer sad. that whole thing goes on, the more the noble is like, hmm, maybe I can just replace my son, <laughs> and it's just like the grieving process, and it's just like, he, ha he hasn't it's actually so gotten sad. over. It's he hasn't so actually sad. Over it. He hasn't will, gotten over the fact that his son is dead. I will say the other part, uh, the other side of this uh, episode during the dance itself, my God, like throughout, throughout the, uh, these episodes, this whole time, uh, since Stark got in introduced, you've seen the banter between Stark and Fern, uh, quite a lot. And, and it's hilarious. It, it's great. It's cute. But like, you see it grow more and more. It's like a drip feed. It's, it's a ship that, that, uh, 
that happens uh, on a slow burn. But this episode, my God, during the dance, it takes off. Like, you see Fern oh, staring I... at Stark with, Bro. like, just wonderment. Bro, all I got to say is just fuck already! <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember... But... How soon it is after this that there's the whole like oh it's Fern's birthday and they have to get her a birthday present and Stark doesn't understand like why she was mad and what she wants and it's just like she literally asked you for that a birthday was actually present. the previous episode was it the previous episode yeah okay like I remember that scene I was like oh she got a crush and I'm like Stark you fucking idiot <laughs> her <laughs> likes you ooh ooh and it's funny because like obviously they're they're pretty close in age right i i think it's like maybe a two or three year age difference maybe i'd assume they're close in age i i, I, yeah. I don't know the thing pretty is sure they're close in age we don't understand the passage of time that happens in here uh, yeah. until they show it on screen like all we know is like it's been 30 years after the hero himmel has passed that's yeah. all we know about like what what time frame we are in um I mean, you see. We're also not told exactly how long a year is. A year on this planet could be five hundred days, for all we know. Yeah, yeah, we we don't know. You uh, also see. I mean, we see Fern go from literal child to young adult, teenager. Yeah, like teenager, teenager, teenager. Well, you see her as a teenager, and then quite possibly young adult by the time. Uh, I don't think she's 18 years old yet by the time the end of the series or the end of this episode ro- or the end of the season rolls around. Maybe, I don't even maybe think she's 18. Not. I'm yet. not sure, bro. No idea. Stark is. No, Stark has his but, 18th birthday, but I don't think that Fern does. We, we I think she's 17. We're just not sure is the thing. I mean, I could go to the manga and give you actual ages, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, one thing that's surprising to me is like as much as I liked Free Run, I still haven't gone to go read the manga. I'm genuinely surprised. That, that is that is surprising for you because usually if you fall in love with an anime, your first inclination is to go pick up the manga and catch up with it. Well, there's a reason for that, and it's more about like how the anime is being done. Like, I, I definitely think there are certain things, especially uh, the voice acting and sound design, are mm. big major factors of why I like anime productions. Like, because mm-hmm. they're the only things that literally I could not get in a manga. Yeah. If I go read a light novel or a manga, I don't have that. So I think that with the uh, sound design of Free Ren and with the voice acting and stuff, it, I just it elevates it all, so much better than a manga could ever do. Like I'm sure yeah. the story in the manga is really good. I'm sure the art is really good, but it's missing the other elements that make this more enjoyable. Like to and me, Evan watching calls Free... beautiful soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, Evan calls beautiful soundtrack. To me, watching Free Ren, like I said, is like watching a movie, and it's like watching this epic movie play out is a lot better than like reading the screenplay you know like sure you could read a screenplay of a movie and be like okay i know what happens and it's like oh that's pretty cool what happens and stuff but actually experiencing it with the voice acting and the sound design and like how they frame the uh shots and stuff like that mm-hmm. that's it's almost a different entirely experience. yeah entirely yeah, different yeah. experience yeah. Just because the story is the same doesn't mean i'm gonna experience it the same which is why i haven't gone to read the manga yet because i'm just like I like the anime that much. The mm. medium matters. Yeah, in this certain aspect, uh, yes, I would yeah, say the medium instance, matters. I would, to me. I would 100% instance, agree with yes. that. Um, should we finally get to the final arc? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, the final arc. Oh my god! They did not. They pulled out all the stops, bro. Can I? Holy can I just shit. say when when they said that they were going to do this, and I, I figured that the first class mage exam was going to be like the final arc. They were going to use the last however many episodes from when it starts to 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 do the whole thing. Do you know what it reminded me of? What? It reminded me so much of the tuning exam arc from Naruto. Hey, it really <laughs> is though. That so, I, the whole time I'm sitting here thinking, my God, we're getting so much backstory on all these other characters that have just now come in, and m- we're getting like lore dumps and world dumps. I'm like, my God, this is just like the tuning exam arc, which is my favorite, are, my favorite arc in the original Naruto. Here we are at the actual battle tournament arc. All right, <laughs> this is why it was Free Run's in jump because there's an actual battle tournament arc. <laughs> like, yeah. like no joke, there's a battle tournament arc. It's the first class, ma- first class mage exam. I, again, 
since I don't read the source material for this, I didn't know what to expect. I was just like, you know, part of me was like, are they just going to just like let Fru and breeze through everything? Cause you know, like haha, Fru and she's, she's literally the hero who saved the kingdom like 80 years ago. Mm-hmm. So does she really need to like, yeah, it's been 80 years. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's the hero that saved the, the world 80 years ago. Does she really need this exam? But also, like, it's been 80 years, and, like, we learned the reason why Freerun doesn't care about the first, like, Freerun's not a first-class mage, and she's like, yeah, I don't want to be a first-class mage, because that's dumb. And she's like, why? And it's like, because there's so many different magic class entities that just come and go, like, she has this thing <laughs> she's from, She's quite like, literally outlived so many of them. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, she doesn't care. It's like, okay, that makes sense. That's a fair assessment, you know? She has this, like, ancient badge thing that's like, yeah, I got it one time. Does this still count? And it's like, this this country hasn't existed in a thousand years <laughs> it's like one old guy uh, who actually With matters his was like, card. oh holy shit you're someone important well it's like it's like if i were to give you a certification from the holy roman empire <laughs> yeah uh but the um the first exam i thought was really cool just because like we get to experience other characters uh was it lavine and i don't remember the other girl's name uh, uh, the the red haired girl. Yeah, the I can't the, remember Kane. Name either. Kane, Line, uh, Kane? Lavine and uh, Kane. Yeah, Lavine and Kane, like freaking hilarious. Like free red. She, so the first exam, they get split off into different groups. So we get to see different mages and stuff, and then free Ren gets split away from Fern, which we're like, oh, that kind of sucks. But you know, like Fern's capable; oh. she'll probably be fine. And then we get uh. Freerin having to deal with Lavina and, and Ka- Kana, Ka- Kana, whatever. Kana, 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 whatever. And it's just like big tail <laughs> the, girl. The the infighting that they have, it's just freaking hilarious. It's like, what? Who are these children? <laughs> Why are they in the first class mage exam? Like, the, and it's like I was fully expecting uh Freerin to be the one who's just like, yeah, let me just catch this bird. Let me just go grab everything. Yeah. You know, because like the she warns Fern about, you know, be careful of above you because she understands like there's these deaf birds that are going to come in and kill you because they they sense magic. Watch and, the skies. Yeah, watch the skies. And it's just like, huh, that's weird. And first night they're camping and then all of a sudden, uh, I don't remember which of the girls. I think it was Kana that gets caught or Lavine. Mm. It's one of the two gets caught by the damn bird. It's. The uh, Kane. Kane gets caught by the bird. And it's just like, oh, crap, she's about to die. And then we just have Freerun just, like, blast it. And, like, you good? <laughs> and it's like, because it's, like, to me, I'm like, do people not know who this is? Like, no one understands who Freerun is? Like, the only person who actually... Apparently, very few people, especially younger people, don't know because it's been 80 years. That's true. But it's still, like, she's literally one of... Then, then again, like we saw with, um... Oh, my God. Craft that people who are heroes they fall to the wayside Mm -hmm. because it's like you know we we meet craft we don't know who he is but we we just know he's older than free rain but when uh we learn more about him it's like oh he's actually one of the like he's he's someone another hero that helped save the world at some point in time and it's like oh there are multiple heroes but no one knows about craft so it, it makes sense like again it they set it up they set that one thing up for this specific arc to be like, oh, this is why they don't know who Freerun is. Other than Denkin, who was like a long lived mage, who was like, I know who Freerun is. Yeah. Well, and the people who are putting on the test also know who she is. Uh, some of them do. Yeah. Some, they'll, they'll have, at least have, have heard of Freerun, but they don't know who she is. Yeah. They may not know what she looks like, but they've heard the name. So it's just like, yeah, I, I thought Freerun was just going to steamroll everyone and just, like, catch the bird herself. But, no. Again, she takes this as a teaching moment to teach um, Kana and Lavine, like, how to go catch the steel. And it's, yeah. it's it's super cool. And <laughs> we also see, like, a- actually other mages fighting and stuff. And then there's freaking Ubel. Freaking Ubel. I don't, I don't know about Ubel. any of you, by, but Ubel makes me feel some kind of way. Bro, I don't know. Just like them you are the other freaking rest of the weirdos in the internet fucking loving Ubel, and i'm like oh it's like it's, this listen, will cut you that, in half literally listen it's just it's just what what would happen if we gave ted bundy a sex change oh. and made him speak japanese i hate this i hate being here i hate <laughs> it 
Oh, please. Whoever is out there, please do not draw that. Oh, Lord. Please. Uh, Hideo Miyazaki no. was right. For, uh... <laughs> anime really was a mistake. <laughs> anime really was a mistake. No, nah, Yobel's great, though. I love her. She's slightly psychotic. Uh, yeah, I, I think super... going. I, I just thought it was super cool to see Down like, boy. other people fight. <laughs> Uh, in the like, get getting to actually see other mages finally for the first yeah. time because the only people we have seen so far are literally free Rin and fern like there's we don't Which need any is, other mages. It's something they kind of like kind of touch on a little bit too. Uh, not only during this first class mage exam, but also they kind of drip feed this to this. They drip feed that to us over the course of the preceding few episodes too. That magic or mages like because the world is progressing and technology is progressing, it's not seen as like this high calling as it used to be. So there's less people practicing it now. I don't. So the only people who, uh, as we've learned that practice magic are people who use it for war. Um, yeah. Prime. And it's a peaceful being, time. Well, kind of. So it's like, we have Denkin who's like this Imperial mage. Who's like, uh, you know, he's, he's a high ranking official in the government who is a very powerful mage and he got there by being a powerful mage and helping wage war and win battles and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we have like the, uh, the other guy who is like, he's the, he's a second class mage who's in charge of like the magic battalion. Who's oh, actually Weirbel. responsible. Yeah. Who's actually responsible for fighting the demons and still fighting the demons. Mm -hmm. But also he not just demons though, but he also fights other people. Yes. Yeah, and it's just For like, fun. oh, in, in typical human fashion, now that there's no longer a giant looming threat, we're going to go back to pilfering each other. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that, we're going to go turn on each other now. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And you got Yubel, who's just, like, full of bloodlust and just wants to kill people. <laughs> yeah, I don't Mommy. She's a psycho, psycho, psycho bitch. Mommy. I love her. Oh. So, yeah, the, anyway. uh, the first exam... Um, ends and it, it's pretty cool like watching them all fight and seeing like <laughs> seeing people think they can take on free rent that was hilarious <laughs> it generally yeah. was it, it, i also was... like how she does one of those all according to the keikaku shit kind of moves where i've been analyzing this barrier the whole time boom it's gone yeah it's like the uh because because free rent's so good at suppressing her mana and mages don't understand like why she would suppress her mana to the degree that she does because that's such a fine control control skill mm -hmm. even though she's like the worst at it <laughs> that's why she spent so long doing it <laughs> um everyone looks at her it's like she's not that strong but it's like only truly only the truly strong people actually understand how strong free run is just like only truly strong people understood how strong siri is which yeah. makes sense yeah um so yeah, this, the first test ends, and both Fern's party and uh, Freerun's party move on, along with, I think, was it four others? Uh, Denkin's there were party, six total. Weirbill's party. Um, those are the only other two I remember. But, yeah, there are other people that were able to pass. Yeah. Um, and so you get to the second test, and the second test is essentially a dungeon crawl. That's pretty much all it is. It's quite literally yeah. a race to the dungeon. Yeah. And it's yeah. so funny because it's like freaking free runs party is just, just, they're just having a dungeon adventure where mm -hmm. everyone else is fucking struggling. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the fact that you see these because uh, like the twist of this, this test is that there's also replicas of everyone who goes inside the dungeon running around and you have to eventually fight them if you come across them. Um, and then the whole time you see like the, the other parties are struggling to like keep up, and then you just cut to Fern and Freerin with the 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 test Proctor just running around like looking for for chests and treasure, just literally just <laughs> yeah. casually strolling. Just and casually they even discover a ancient walk. trove of treasure too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then like Sense was like uh, the teacher proctoring it, or the the first class mage proctoring the second exam was Sense, and she's just like, yeah, I'm gonna go with Freerin's party because one. Uh, Sense doesn't understand how strong Free Rin is. She's mm -hmm. just like, again, she couldn't get a read on her her mana, but was just like she was able to dispel this thing that was casted by the. It, it, um, what they said was, 
she turned the magical world upside down when she dispelled that barrier, which was supposed to be impossible. Because to them, the person, because the person who cast that barrier is the person who they all think is the the epitome of magic, who is uh Siri or Sari. Yeah, Sidier. Sidier. I'm gonna call her Siri. Uh, which makes sense because again, Siri is like apparently this another long lived elf who we actually learn later is not only uh is Freerin's teacher's teacher. <laughs> Is yeah, Flom's it's Flom's teacher. teacher. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> She's actually a lot, probably a lot stronger than Free Ren then. She's a lot older, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, from what we understand, she's from a very bygone age of the world called the Mythical Era. <laughs> if that's any, which has given no indication to us at all of how old this world is or how old I'm gonna Siri say at is. at least 10 to 15,000 years, yeah, like, maybe. I'm pretty sure Siri's like, over 10,000 years old. If Ruin's like 5,000, Sari's probably like 10 or 15,000 years old at this point. And it's just like, it's crazy, first and foremost, uh, so that she would be able to destroy someone's barrier who is known as the epitome of magic. Yeah. Makes me. I like how. Sense. I like how with the first test in this exam, like, they were forced to work together in, like, these improvised parties. And then in the second exam, it's basically left up to them whether they want to try and do this alone or in groups or just work together entirely. Yeah, yeah and Dankin and his group are like, obviously, we can work together because we, can all we should work, work together. together because it'd be a lot easier and faster. And that's what Sense wanted. Sense is like, yeah, this would be a very easy exam to pass if you all just work together. But, but they people don't have to be like, people and be petty. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, again, it makes sense. For a lot of these mages, they're like, I'm hot shit. Like, I can do this by myself. Like, whatever, dude. And, you know, a lot of them get fucking bodied because they had this confidence of like, yeah, I'm, I'm super strong. I'll be able to do this. It's like, so they're going to a dungeon that has not been conquered yet in hundreds of years. And there's a yeah. reason why it hasn't been conquered yet. And yet these mages are still like, yeah, I'll just go by myself. And it's like dude come on <laughs> like i i understand being overconfident because you think you're hot shit but come on dude you're telling me for a hundred years people who are way better like because some of them are like uh third class magicians most of them are second class i believe Fern is a third class mage yeah so is Ubel. but the reason yeah. Ubel was third class was because she uh <laughs> she she fucked up in the first exam three years ago and broke the rules so it's like well it, it's like oh that's kind of crazy you killed the first class mage and it's like wouldn't that automatically pass you but it's like no you broke the rules and it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah they don't seem to have any qualms about people dying during this test they really well, don't because a lot of the mage because to the mages their life is pursuit of magic and very similar to demons they're just like yeah the stronger you are the more you get to just be like i'm right yeah <laughs> straight might know. makes right <laughs> Yeah, might it's very true in the magic society. In the world of magic, yeah. 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 Um I did I do like the second test. They spend a lot of time on the second test. I think they spend like four or five episodes just on the second test. I think the it was appropriate for a dungeon crawl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. very. And this is where they pulled out all the stops for the animation because it's like, okay, so everyone who gets cloned, they are meeting their clones, but we're we're all thinking the same thing, like, wait a second. If everyone gets cloned, does that mean Free Ren and Sense get cloned? The first class mm -hmm. mage and the hero? And it's like, yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> so they eventually get to the, um, I believe it was, was it Denkin's party that gets down there first? They get to the bottom yeah. uh, the bottom room first, yes. They get to the bottom room first, and they open it up, and they're, or they look through, and they're like, yeah, no, I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> and, and it's like, just like, this wasn't... it's free written. <laughs> free written is standing there. Yeah, like, he, oh, he literally... If this wasn't a test, I would have called out my get the, my me golem. the fuck away golem, and I would have run like a little bitch. Dude yeah. literally opened up the door, looked in, and said, all nah. right, nope. <laughs> Oh, it was. So I've got good which news is and I've the, got bad news. Which is one of the few <laughs> ways he's actually survived so long. For a human mage to live that long, you gotta be smart. Yeah, dude's like, got understand ridiculous battles survival that you can't win. Yeah, yeah. Like I remember in the first exam, Denkin tries to fight Free Ren, and he's just like, "I don't. I know I can't beat you, but I don't have to beat you. I just have to make sure you can't save those girls in time." And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. 
Um, I loved all those fights with the replicas, though. Those were like awesome. It was incredible. Oh, yeah. The animation, the music, the the sound design of the battles. My God, it was fantastic. It's funny how like there's parts of the dungeon that are like falling apart during this um the the fights and like the sound design does a really good job of making you feel like this place is falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I also love how all of the um. All the fights require it's, – it's not just about, like, who has the biggest, like, landscape-reducing fart. It's, like, you actually have to think about what you're doing. Yeah, because Is, is that the... not – no, you laughed, Shinoda, but that's what, like, 90% no, of Shonen no, fights right. are. You're right. Who it has the biggest landscape-reducing <laughs> fart? It literally it's true, is. yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm charging a bigger spirit bomb than you are, so I'll win. But it's, like, Hell, it's even not about a that. Shonen I love, Jojo the Bizarre Adventure, is the exact same way. <laughs> Who's got the biggest dick and balls? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. The, oh my god. The So then, uh, eventually, a lot of people show up to the bottom floor, Freeran's party included, and they have to come up with a plan to, like, fight Freeran. And they're like, Freeran, can you kill yourself? He's like, well, if she's exactly like me, then probably not. <laughs> it's like, but I know someone who can kill me. And it's Fern. like, it's Fern. It's like, and Fern's like, yeah, I can kill her. <laughs> And it's also, like, what? Fern can kill Freerun? And it's like, yes and no. Because it's like, the reason Fern... We learned that the reason Fern can kill Freerun is because Freerun has one major weakness. And that's because the um, the Zoltrak is a relatively new spell. So for elves, it's not ingrained into their body to defend against the spell yet. So there's a little bit of a time lag between when she attacks and when she can put up her defense. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't mm -hmm. automatically put up a defense for it Versus, like, every other thing. Like, Freerun has, like, anti-poison, anti-this, anti-that. Yeah. Always um, just cast. And it's just like, yeah, that's just part of life. And it's like, oh, okay. And, we... and the whole reason they have to, like, destroy this replica of, of Freerun is because behind the door behind the bottom room is where the actual, like, demon or monster. entity of this dungeon it's is. It's a monster. Um, yeah, a monster of the dungeon is. And it's the one that's creating the replicas. And it has no way to actually defend itself besides the replicas. So if you actually get into the room, you can destroy the thing very, very easily. Uh, and and the... they also find out that the replicas, if they can't find anybody to fight in the dungeon, they will eventually come back to the bottom room, which is where everyone is gathered outside of. So they devise a plan where it's like, okay, we're going to have a small strike team of Freerun and Fern to go kill actual Freerun so they can destroy the, the clones. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else has to spread apart and like keep the other uh, clones at bay. Yeah, and keep them busy. Yeah, it's so like, that they don't get ganked. Yeah, and it makes sense. And it's like, uh, we, and then we see Sense, Sense's clone. It's like we learn how her magic works. And it's just like, oh, fuck. Her hair. <laughs> Which like, is really she, cool. Yeah, and then then we learn more about magic, about how it's about a world of imagination and how there's just certain magic that trumps other magic. Like, Ubel was like, hmm, if Sense's power is that she can... Her magic is all about manipulating her hair, which is like, it takes a lot of fine magic control to do that. And it basically acts like a defensive layer. But it's like, Ubel is like the worst matchup for Sense because Ubel's like, her magic is literally, if I think I can cut it, it gets cut. Yeah. And that's and where we learn, like, and for her, the reason she didn't hair, pass yeah. the exam was because she killed... The first class mage who's like, I have the strongest defenses in the world. You can't beat it. My cloak is, well, has all these defenses. And she's like, but your cloak is made of paper or made of cloth, right? Cut. Literally kills the dude. He's yeah. like, fuck, I cut too deep. She's like, whoops. <laughs> she's like, whoopsie. And then it's like, just like, same thing for sense. It's like, oh, you have hair? It doesn't matter how many enchantments you have on your hair. Hair can be cut. And that is my reality because I grew up, uh, my sister was a tailor and I grew up watching her use scissors. It is just like, bro, what? There's actual magic that just counters every other thing? But it's like, but in the same vein, though, things that she knows can't get cut by scissors, like um, steel and stuff, she can't cut. Which is like, well, that's kind of a detriment. <laughs> yeah. But it's so interesting how the magic system is shown to work in this world. It's not soft magic, but it's not hard magic either. It's something in the between. Magic's just, <laughs> the magic's bullshit because it's literally whatever your imagination is able to do, it can do. And it's like, yeah. but it takes it very literal. Like, you can say that you believe in something, but in this world, to manifest it through magic, you have to truly believe it. You can't just think it. You it has to, to be a reality. Yeah, it has to be your reality. 
So it's like, you can think that you can cut metal, but it's like, I've never seen metal cut by scissors. So I wouldn't be able to imagine it being cut by scissors. I wouldn't be able to cut metal if I had Ubel's power. However, I have seen hair get cut and cloth be cut by scissors and skin and stuff in that perspective. I've used scissors to cut meat all the time. Like I can imagine anything. It doesn't matter how many enchantments you have. Meat it exists. It can be cut. I could cut you in half. It's like, dude, that's pretty sick. But also, like, kind of bullshit, because it's like, <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> you could have the ultimate defense, but it doesn't matter because you have someone's magic who specifically counters you. It's like, fuck. Jerry, remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Yeah. But, again, super cool. <laughs> so, uh, the, oh, my God, dude, the fight scene when Freerin fights Freerin. Oh, dude. Oh, so it good. was oh. beyond she epic. Starts, she starts throwing fucking lightning bolts, and it looks fucking amazing. I was like, oh, my God. They saved all of the budget for the end. They actually did it. Holy crap. And like this whole time we were thinking, wow, they are just spending the budget really wisely, managing to spread it out. No, they actually saved it for the big fight at the end. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> and this big fight at the end, I'm like, I can forgive the, the claymation ending now that looks weird. I can forgive the dragon fight. It looks so good, dude. <laughs> and it's like, you you think, oh, she's just going to start spamming Zoltrak. It's like, no, she also uses other spells, like yeah. lightning spells. Like we've and, gotten like, freaking... so used to seeing her only do a attack magic because that's what she deems worthy for this era she doesn't need anything else but against herself she's like nah i gotta pull out the stops <laughs> yeah and then yeah. it's like the entire time a uh, free is just fighting free Ren to just get an opening so that way fern can uh because fern is uh way better than free Ren is at concealing her mana like in fact it's hard for free Ren to find fern if she conceals her magic so it's like, all right, you can be you 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 will be able to sneak up and hit her and hit me, the clone, and kill her. And it's like she finally finds the chance and she does it. And then it's like Free Red's just like, oh, I can't. It's been almost eighty years since I was last forced to use this. I think it was the, only the Demon King who forced me to use this. And it's like <laughs> Free Red has hidden powers, of course, where she's like, yeah, when I'm near death, when I take damage, I automatically retaliate. By the way, and it just fucking knocks Fern out. And it's like, oh shit, oh fuck. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the old fuck moment of that fight, man. It really yeah, it's like you oh my see god, her stack fucking dead? entirely shatter, and I was like, oh my god, did they just? Yeah, kill it's Fern? just like, oh my god, is Fern about to get bodied? But then, Free Ren again, all according to fucking Keikaku with Free Ren, she's like, perfect Fern. Now that you created, I created that distraction for you to do damage against me. You created, and now you're the distraction for me to do this against my clone to kill it. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck, Free Red? <laughs> 5D. 5D chess. Absolutely. But, dude, the fight was so good. I loved it. Like, yeah. throwing the fucking, all the spells and stuff. It looks so good. And then I think everyone who is still in the bottom of the the dungeon after that happens, they all end up passing. Uh, and there's only like every four or five single, people that don't make it out. Not every single one of them during the fight were able to do that. Some weren't. Yeah, uh, the uh, the two girls that were with uh, Freerun during the first test don't pass. One only one doesn't. of them. No, one of them passes. Yeah, well, yeah, they go into the third test, but then they fail the third test. Well, yeah, kind of fails it too because then we get to the third test, which is like, okay, we just Bullshit. had a super, super epic fight. And what's the third test? It's like the third test is we get to meet finally. We get to meet uh, Siri, who is like the epitome of magic. And as we learn, Siri is the teacher of Flam, who is Freerun's teacher. So we're like, oh shit! Oh, oh and she man, knows she's... who she knows one hundred percent who Freerun is, and she knows who Freerun is, and it's just like. Then Free Red's like, yeah, no, 100%, I'm not going to pass if the third test is Siri because she hates me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. It's because Siri, in her mind, it's like magic is a tool. Magic is something to be wielded and learned and sought after, but that's it. Like, that's all it yeah. is. It's so There's... unique how much thought process Siri has and how much you can actually interpret uh, from her because you see what she says, but then you see her actions and you see what she remembers of all her past students and you see how yeah, it's like she... multi-layered this character is and it's truly distinctive so like series test is like okay there is uh there are way too many people who passed the test this year so i'm gonna proctor the third test myself and it's basically i'm they're gonna come and say hi to me and i'll tell them if they pass or fail and 
Freeman's like, yeah, I'll never pass. And because, you know, Sari hates me. And as it turns out, like, we think Freeran is strong. But in reality, she's actually pretty weak in comparison to other elves because she struggles. Freeran struggles with magic. It took her thousands of years to condense her mana compared to like someone like Sari who was able to do it in hundreds of years versus thousands of years. So in Sari's perspective, Freeran is a bad mage. But also, Sari doesn't take into account just the... um amount of magic that this person has like Freeran definitely has more magic than the rest of everyone else in the world right now like she's probably the second strongest in the world outside of Sari. that we However, know of in terms of mana capacity that we know of but that doesn't mean she won't be killed you know just because you have higher mana doesn't mean you can't be killed as we saw with fern fern can kill free Ren if you get if you do it just right you could kill him even no matter how strong you are you can still be insta shot mm -hmm. so that because that's just how magic works in this world but with Sari, she also factors in, like, not just your mana, but also, like, your, uh, the ability of your imagination and your, like, morals and stuff. Because she, uh, you know, the first person who goes in there is Kana, and she's like, you fail. And Doesn't even like, say anything, just fail. Yeah, she just walks in. She's like, hello, and she's like, you fail. Next. She's like, oh, can I ask why? It's like, because you can't envision yourself as a first-class mage, so you don't get to be one. As you know, magic... The world of magic is about how you envision things. And it's like, that makes a lot of sense. So then they, she starts failing a bunch of people who, like, honestly probably shouldn't pass. Because yeah. it's like, they got, they were just lucky to get to where they are because of, like, certain people. However, then we start getting to other people who, like, who are really strong. It's like, Ubel? She's like, you pass. Instantly, yeah. you pass. Not even say anything. She just took one look. She's like, you pass. pass. <laughs> and then she meets, like, because she's like, because ubel you know she's a bloodthirsty monster she was just like instantly was thinking of ways to kill uh <laughs> sarah like instantly just wanted to fight her like that's in ubel's entire personality let me fight just let me kill people and in the so same uh, like, perspective uh you get denkin after as well and he um she looked took a look at him she's like normally i would fail you because you're so old and th there's no point but then she was like but you thought about fighting me for a second. You still got some fire in you. <laughs> and she's like, you're worthy. You're worthy of first class. The old man's got spunk. He really does. <laughs> and then, like, the um, there's the commander of the um, Magic Battalion, the anti-demon Magic Battalion, Weirville, where he shows up, and it, she's just like, what's your favorite spell? And he's just like, I, I don't care about spells. They're just a tool to kill, help me kill demons. And she's like, oh, interesting. You pass. Because it's like her, it's what Sari believes too. It's just a tool. Magic is just a tool. And then, oh my god, this ballsy, we never talked about him, but fucking land. This ballsy <laughs> motherfucker. Oh. The fucking, the clone dude. Like, yeah. Who Ubel he this in is into, that you, you can clearly tell she's into him. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't make sense because it's so funny. So there's this guy. We didn't talk about him the entire time because he's kind of just a whatever character, but it's like he's a guy. His power is that he can create clones, and you never know who's the actual, the real him. And as we learn from Sari, she's like, "You haven't been here taking this test this yeah. entire time. Why should I let you fucking pass?" Yeah, and then you <laughs> see a pan and zoom all the way to somewhere completely else. He's and you still see he's no, in his no, fucking. No, no. <laughs> He's in his hometown drinking tea. He was here this entire time. Yeah. And he, he just gets a look of, oh shit, I actually got caught for once. <laughs> it's just like, hey, I like it. the balls in this kid. Like, you pass. Like, you got it was literally fucking balls. It was, it was literally like that scene for Baby Driver. I just blinded by the balls on that kid. <laughs> oh, man. That guy. It is just like, and then, uh, so then she fails Free Ren because she's like, Free Ren, you suck. <laughs> and then also, like, yeah, you find I out her so. from the Magic Association <laughs> yeah, for, a thousand for the years. next a thousand years. Uh, also, we find out during that interview, interview in giant air quotes, she's a fucking hypocrite because she asked uh, Free Ren what her favorite spell is, and she parrots what her master's favorite spell is, Flom, with the, you know, the uh, flower creation spell that creates a field of flowers. Yeah. Um, and she's such a fucking hypocrite because she uses that exact same spell to make the flowers in the garden that she's sitting in. Well, because she, 
you know, because the elves are so long lived, they don't understand what it means to like care for people and stuff. And that's why uh, yeah. Saria even talks to when she's talking to Freer and she's like, you know, I've taken a lot of uh, disciples and most of them have disappointed me by not getting to where I wanted them to be, mm. but I've never regretted it. And then it's like Freer understands that. She's like, yeah, because you're understanding that what it's to the value of someone's lifespan, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Like, and just because like you, they. You get an understanding of the fact that she does still care for them because she remembers all their favorite spells each of, and every single one of her students and you're yeah. like oh you got a little sundry in you it's just again it's a it's about the journey it's about understanding uh, a typical lifespan and just taking time to stop and smell the fucking flowers beautiful yeah. story how it resolves like that oh my god yeah. dude oh my god uh, and then she meets fern and is like you pass <laughs> instantly like oh the potential on this kid because fern is the only person who's actually able to see that how strong sari really is it's like well that's crazy she's like oh you're holding back your mana as well just like my master <laughs> and my god that reveal that reveal that like it blindsided everyone because we all thought no she she didn't she doesn't care to uh hold it back but we find out no, she's actually tricking everyone as well. It's like, holy shit, the slap yeah. in the face. Her magic is a lot stronger than that. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's not too much that happens after that. I mean, that's pretty much the wrap-up. Uh, I mean, there is a little bit that happens after. I do like that there's the one, like, first-class mage that tries to attack Freerin while uh, yeah, Fern is um, getting her privilege thing. It's Sere's um, current disciple. student. The one current, current the, one, disciple. the one who was originally going to proctor the final test. Yeah, and the reason he's doing that is because he wants the approval of his master. Mm. I like Learn, how uh, yeah, that dude. Um, I like how Fern talks him down with talk no jutsu um, and uh, basically tells him, you know, You'd be a really good first class mage in wartime. You're not suited for peace. <laughs> Which is the exact thing uh, his master, Seiri, uh, said to him as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a shame that <laughs> it's peaceful times now. Yeah, and he's like getting old. He's, he's up there in years, and he's probably not going to be alive much longer anyway. <laughs> and then freaking. Uh... <laughs> And Freeman's like, I don't need to fight you. Your master knows who you are. And then we get the reveal about what Sari feels. And it's like, oh, freaking Sundari elves, dude. These freaking <laughs> yeah. elves. They're all Sundaris. And they have lovely feet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was season one of Freerun. Yeah. I also, uh, that I, final I scene. That I, final scene is, is pretty good. I, I have to say, I love the fact that... Um, Siri offered a reward of whatever spell because she is known as the living grimoire because she knows like basically every spell and one of the rewards for getting to uh class a was um whatever spell you wanted <laughs> fucking furnace for laundry spell a laundry spell <laughs> and Siri would just <laughs> give her the elf look and was like are you fucking insane <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely you can have that. any spell you want in the world that I know of, and you chose the spell to the laundry spell <laughs> to stay clean. Like, and Fravrin <laughs> was so proud of her because that's one of the lost mythical era uh, uh, spells. <laughs> 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 so fucking... Like the only thing Fravrin cares about is the the fact that it's a you know in gacha terms it's an SSR rank pull like it's a super yeah. rare ability, not the fact that it's super useless. It's like no, it doesn't matter if it's useless or not, which is again perfect for the theme about like like her even her teacher flom like why is flom's favorite spell the the flower spell and it's like just because she yeah. likes it and that's why free Run likes it because it was her teacher's favorite spell and it's yeah. just like oh that's that's pretty sweet yeah and you get that that final scene where our, our heroes are going off continuing their journey up to the north and then you get that little title card at the end says the journey to the end continues like ooh, ooh, you bait me you bait me so well <laughs> 
We're season two. I need a season two confirmation. I need it badly. A as of as of the time of this recording, watch tomorrow. What fucking tomorrow, tomorrow they're gonna fucking yeah. announce it. Uh, but, uh it happens more often than not on this podcast where something happens and we'll say like as of now, and then like a day or two later it'll be something gets announced where it's completely different than what we say. Um but as of right now, as the time we're recording this, there has not been a second season announced. I have to imagine. I have to imagine, as well-received as this has been, it's got to get a second yeah. season. Yeah, it's not you just well-received. No, 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 no. You failed to understand something, sir. Hmm. Madhouse is animating it. That's, okay, mm. that's something I did want to bring up because, like, the Madhouse it curse. is Madhouse, and we've seen that Madhouse is really good at single-season adaptations, not so good at multi-season adaptations. Listen. Maybe just, do, just go ahead and give it to 8-Bit. Just do it now. Do it now. No game, no life. It doesn't have the second season. We got a movie, but not a second movie. season. One Punch Man, the second season was picked up by JC staff. And right? it sucks. And we don't talk about Overlord. We don't. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we don't talk about Overlord. No. <laughs> uh, Listen, where was the team on Free Ren for Overlord? Come on, guys. Why why couldn't the, the Free Ren team be working on, on Overlord as well? I, I don't understand, but anyway. I, I don't. Um, I do. Before we get out of here, I do want to say one thing. Uh, I want to ask you guys one thing. Um, scores. I don't think there's going to be any debate on this from any of us. This yeah, is a I mean, ACAD ten out of ten across like, the board. Across the board. Across the board. And uh, I said this in the Discord, but the only issue I had um, was the dragon fight, the animation. It was just janky and iffy, but it wasn't a big part of the story. It wasn't a big deal. And overall, it's not like I didn't see what was happening. And also, the fact that Stark was able to one-shot a fucking dragon was super cool, right? Yeah. It was like this, that, that was pretty fucking cool. He just, like, one-shots it. And it's like, wow, he didn't really know how strong he was. I'm like, bro, you've been practicing for the last, like, two months at cleaving this continent in half. Of course you're fucking strong. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell, dude? But he's like, no, I'm not as strong as my Master Eisen. My Master Eisen would have been able to cleave this thing straight in half. I can only get about halfway. And it's like bro <laughs> he's cleaving like 10 miles of stone in half like come on <laughs> fuck out of here but yeah i i this is probably the first time we've ever had a unanimous 10 out of 10 on anything we've reviewed oh god is it really i, I think so oh so, yeah see i i didn't want to give it out of 10 out of 10 out of the principle that i don't give shows 10 out of 10 but you know what i i honestly have no complaints i wish i i want to have complaints <laughs> i normally see. have some complaints At, i don't with free run and that sucks that's, it sucks that's a good like, problem I to like have every single second of this fucking show i liked every single second that as is so as, rare as soon as i finished this show i was talking to john and i was like i am trying i'm desperately trying to see a reason to give it a nine and not a ten i couldn't find a reason and i've been thinking about this the past couple of days after i legitimately think this is a masterpiece in every sense of the word and that is not yeah. that is something not a single one of us hand out lightly that is so incredibly important it is so potent yeah, and I'm, this, I'm not this very takes the loose cake. with my 10 out of 10s, bro. Like, I honestly, <laughs> the only complaint I have is, like, that people were right, that it was going to be anime of the year, that it was amazing. That's my only complaint, that people were fucking right. <laughs> That's like, not the fault it, of free People were right for once. <laughs> people were right to hype this up. It's actually really good. God damn it. Go watch I... free Rain. It's 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 crazy to me because like I know the big thing about on Mal it's like nothing can ever be as good as Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Watching this through to the end, I got the same feeling I got when I originally watched Full Metal Alchemist or Brotherhood for that matter, or Ghost in the Shell, or 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 Death Note, or or whatever back in the day. I. I genuinely feel like I watch something that number one is really fucking great. And number two is probably going to stand the test of time. Yeah. I, I think agree. Free Ren's definitely just like, it's, it's here to stay as like one of the greats. Definitely. Now I, I hope my big hope going forward is we don't have with the anime side of things, because the manga that it's based off of is still publishing. I hope we don't have a thing with the anime like we have with ReZero where we got to wait five fucking years for a new season. 
I'll be so honest, I'll Razor be Oats perfectly fine season? with it so long as the quality is kept up. That's uh, my personal that's a take. a long time to wait, man. It is. It's an extremely long time. I'm fine with it. Listen, as long as they have the exact same staff that was working on season one, do season two, that's all I care about. Yeah, Or for just real. give it 8-bit. Just, just give it 8-bit right now. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> just hand it off. <laughs> Alex is so scared of the Madhouse curse. I'm so fucking terrified of Madhouse doing a second season of this. Oh, uh, uh, but that's it. That's that's free run. Um, we loved it. Uh, I, I'd love to hear what people think about it. Let us know down below in the comments um, if you think that it's actually a masterpiece like we do, or if you think we're all huffing copium. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a lot harder to find someone that hates this than find someone that loves this. I'll tell you that much. It is currently sitting in a nine point three nine right now on Mal. A full like point uh, three. Uh, above Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh my God! <laughs> I know the fact that uh, it's going to take downvoted a... to hell. <laughs> it has not been downvoted to hell yet, so maybe even the fucking FMA Bros love this. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and, may and maybe it's a little bit of recency bias too. Maybe it'll it'll even out over time. Who knows? Um, but that's it. That's free run. I hope you all enjoyed listening to us talk about it. Um. Be sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below um, if you liked what you saw and you want to see more. Also, check down below where you can find links to Anime Club After Dark on all kinds of different platforms. We also have a link to our merch store down below where you can uh, buy Anime Club After Dark merch like this lovely, lovely Tumblr. Um, and it really does help us out. Um, but with that, though, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Good night, bye. When Method was hugging Freyren and she was like, <laughs> and Fern got so mad. So cute. Oh, yeah. So jealous. <laughs> it's like, how dare you touch my That's mom like my that? That's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and the Fern, the Fern pals, I don't. They... Mm! Fern, I don't care who it is, whether it's Freyren or Stark, just fuck somebody already. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be weird. Just Stark, not her mom. Oh, God. So she don't go all over again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're out. We're out.